Kia ora tātou, no my heart of mine. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Asia Pacific and Middle East qualifier, Little League Juniors 2024. We've got game uh, five of the tournament, New Zealand versus Indonesia. We're just waiting for the umpiring crew to take their uh, place behind the plate and we'll be going straight into the national anthems led by New Zealand, followed by Indonesia. we go with the national anthems of both New Zealand <coughs> and Indonesia. We'll now have a exchanging of the gifts between the two teams. Um, it's a nice little tradition, a nice little keepsake um, for the boys to um, keep long after this tournament. And then we'll be going into the New Zealand Haka challenge against uh, against Indonesia after this place meet. I want to say salam at the tongue to our Indonesian viewers, hanyang sayo to our Korean viewers, and half a day to our uh, Guam viewers, and of course a kia ora tātou no mai to all our viewers from New Zealand and around the world joining us today. I am your host Samuel Eva, and of course with me 
wouldn't have it any other way. My co-host today, Roy Antonovich. How are you, Roy? I'm excellent, thanks, Samuel. Looking forward to this challenge to be laid down here by the New Zealand team, traditional haka. Absolutely. It's uh, if you. Seen Hucker before? You're in. You know what you're in for. If you haven't, you're in for a treat. There we go with another fantastic haka from the New Zealand team laying down the challenge, welcoming Indonesia uh, to New Zealand. Uh, now, if you're just keeping uh, catching up with the tournament, uh, both teams have played two games apiece, and um, New Zealand unfortunately coming into this game with two losses, as are Indonesia. Um, New Zealand losing to Korea on the opening day in a, in a final inning heartbreak loss. And uh, of course yesterday's game against Guam, that just they just couldn't pull the basics together to, to get out in front. And Indonesia also uh, going down to Guam on opening day and then going down to uh, Indonesia yesterday. Um, but they're not out of the tournament yet, are they Roy? Now that's the interesting thing about this tournament, Samuel. Only the four teams competing here. As we hear, Indonesian team laying down their own little challenge to New Zealand. They fight up for this. So both teams will be in the semi-finals tomorrow. Really the key here is you want to go into the semi-finals with a win under your belt, feeling good. The loser, of course, will go on to play the top seed, which will be decided later on this afternoon in the game between Korea and Guam. Mm. That is going to be a, a monumental game. If you are in Auckland, make sure you head on down to Follett Field, uh, which is down at um, Cascade Road, Lord Ellsmore Park, home of uh, the Howick Pickeranga Hawks. It is a beautiful day, not a single cloud in the sky, and uh, we are in for a treat. We are in for a beautiful day of baseball as New Zealand take the field as the home team and start warming up. We've got the unit Shane Scanlon behind the plate again, and uh, we've got Penny. Thomas Penny, of course, he Penny. Came, came into the game yesterday, only needed two pitches to get out of a bases loaded jam. That was a real key moment for New Zealand. Gave them an opportunity, opportunity they almost capitalised on. They loaded the bases themselves in the final winnings, but just could not get that key hit. So Roy, yesterday as, as we've discussed, uh, New Zealand just not, not getting over the line against Guam. They did challenge them, I think it was in the fifth inning. Uh, trying to get back into the game after uh, a first and second inning loss to uh, Guam. What do you think they have to do today to get out in front of this Indonesia team early on? Well, the key to them has actually just been the basics, Samuel. So it's been the little bobbles, it's been it's been the the little base running errors. They need to be aggressive, as Mark Irwin told us yesterday. They need to show a little bit of mongrel, Samuel. A little bit of mongrel, <laughs> absolutely, from uh, tournament director Mark, um, <clears throat> and uh, 
just a big thank you of course to tournament director Mark but also to all volunteers here our umpires our umpires our scorers our fantastic ground crew ground crew getting this diamond looking fantastic um, and uh, everyone else that's just supported this tournament to go ahead bring international baseball into New Zealand's backyard which is awesome now it is better up for Indonesia we've got number nine uh, coming to join us here uh, to uh, Toka Raisa. I apologize uh, if I get any names wrong. He is batting 500 for the tournament, so leading off for Indonesia, feeling, I'm, I assume, feeling fairly confident and wanting to add to his 500 average here. Indonesia will definitely be looking for a good start. Conditions more favorable to them today. Just a uh, just a light zephyr blowing in from left field, as opposed to the howling gales we've had. Right, first pitch from Thomas Penny is a ball. And you'll be able to hear the Indonesian team next to us just absolutely amped for this game today. We've got an inside ball. We don't have speeds with us at the moment. We have uh, Paul Vodonovic behind the plate today, controlling this game. There we go, first strike from Thomas Penny. Nice down the middle. So you'll notice today a few changes to the New Zealand lineup. I, I think they're being frustrated with how things are going, looking to mix it up. We're seeing Nico Waru, one of the stars on the mound yesterday. He's moved into third base. Corbin McKinley still playing short. Hugo Harvey at second base. So same middle infield as yesterday. And we've got a change here over at first. Messiah has moved into first as we see this leadoff walk. Yes, yeah, so a leadoff walk for Thomas Penny. Not a scenario that you want to find yourself in, um, but it uh, does, does happen. We do have number 34. Uh, coming in right now, so it's, which is Keenan Trisandi. He's batting a 160. Thomas Penny coming in with another low ball there, but in the dirt for Scanlon, holding that, that runner on first there. Just to finish that New Zealand defensive alignment, we have Tangaroa King, yesterday's starting pitcher out in left field, and it looks like they've uh, moved the big unit TJ Amosa into centre field and Max McKay in right field. Okay. Oh, I just got it again, <laughs> so big apologies to uh, to to Max. It's not a McKay, despite the, the the spelling of that name. It's McKay, and having known him for many years now, you'd think that both Samuel and I would get that right. Shane just had a little bit of trouble early on trying to trying to block that ball or not so much block but trying to recover that ball now the field is a little bit dewy today so uh, that ball every time it hits that grass is gonna just get a little bit wetter a little bit more slipperier um, but we do have a beautiful day of sunshine here it is uh, not a cloud in the sky so as that sun gets a little bit higher it will dry out that field Thomas really needs to find the strike zone here. Yeah. This has been a problem all tournament long for this New Zealand team. You've got to throw strikes if you want to win baseball games. There we go. Oh, just on the outside of the batter. Issuing a second walk, advancing first base as well. So runners on one and two now. We have uh, number 23. Coming in. He looks down, takes the signals from his coach. This is a real opportunity here for Indonesia early in the game. And this better uh, Athia Trisha Diantara batting 200 for the tournament so far. So he'll be looking for his opportunity as Penny throws. Another ball here, down and away. 
this uh, that pitch kind of favoured yesterday, but not today from from the umpire behind the plate. This Indonesian team's going to have you on your toes today with uh, pronunciation, Samuel. <laughs> they are, they are, and of course I do apologise if I don't get the uh, sounds uh, the phonics right in their names. I do apologise for that. Please feel free to send us a message and I will try to correct it. Good news is, Samuel has had a coffee this morning, so I expect them in tip-top form. Ready, ready for number three though, Roy. <laughs> ready for number three. <laughs> So I wouldn't think it's going to be too much longer before we see a visit to the mound from the New Zealand pitching coach, Connor Perry. This team cannot he's just get really behind. just struggling to, with his control here. He's uh, loaded up again. I believe this is three, uh, three balls, one strike, if I'm right. And that's on the inside. There we go. Issuing another walk. Bases loaded situation. The uh, coach has taken the gate. And here we go. Roy called it. Pitching coach up just to talk. I don't think it's going to be a replacement. It's just going to be like, hey, just throw strikes. We saw this yesterday. Sometimes you just, you just got to forget the fancy stuff. Yeah, like we did mention though, Samuel, it's, it's easy to say just throw strikes, but... <laughs> I can't. <laughs> we've all experienced it on the mound. Oh, we've just got the um, district administrator from Indonesia over here. Hi. How are you doing today, Roy? Still alive. I'm still alive. <laughs> In this weather. Well, it's, uh, it's much closer to your conditions today. The wind is not quite as strong. Samuel Eva here, already um, struggling with the pronunciation of a few of these Indonesian players, but we'll do our best. <laughs> <laughs> Your team seems to be in good spirits today. Yeah. They had a barbecue up last night on the beach, and they dip in the water. I was afraid they got sick last night. <laughs> dip in the water? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cold. <laughs> So you heard it here first, Indonesian team. They can't complain about the weather conditions when they're prepared to go for a, a swim at the beach in uh, late March in New Zealand. Is, um, that's some chilly conditions, but it's brave. it does explain their good spirits. So number eight, Raphael uh, Somtian. Coming in, he is betting zero after four at bats, two strikeouts so far, so he's going to be looking to get on the board with his first hit as Penny has issued two walks so far. I think you oh, find it's three walks, yeah. Samuel. Three walks, sorry, and uh, three balls on uh, some town here. I think the instruction from the coach will be take all the way here. And there we go. Nice big hit out to right field. It finds ground. That's going to bring one runner in. It's going to oh, bring no. one. And that's those, those simple mistakes from the New Zealand team. Messiah there cutting the ball at first. He should have known that he was coming home with it. Uh, so Max, uh, Max Mackay in the right field, uh, throwing that into first into Messiah, and uh, yeah, not Messiah, not quite seeing the opportunity. He's going to be our first pitching uh, change here with head coach uh, Taya going out to, to see the pitcher. Just hasn't quite worked for Thomas Penny after a great outing yesterday. You can see he's feeling fairly deflated. It's uh, high stakes baseball for these boys, isn't it? Yeah, that's tough. Three walks followed by a single to right field, two run score. It looks like we've got Hargrave uh, coming into it.
kabar, saya bola bagus. So just um, being made aware that unfortunately uh, our go live today seems to have um, had an issue with it so instead this game will be recorded and posted at the conclusion of the game. We apologise for that. As these things happen, as we have a pitching change, number 43, Micah Hargrave coming in, trying to see what we can do to uh, stop the early damage that, that New Zealand has received. Now sitting at 2-0. Micah throwing a fantastic uh, strike there. Trying to get a number for this uh, Indonesian batter. So I can tell you his stats. Out at home. That is the first out. Uh, trying to steal and a bit of time for Shane Scanlon who really put his body on the line there. Oh, good uh, sportsmanship there uh, from Athia who uh, slid into Shane. Shane will be feeling that um, but uh, big unit I'm sure he'll shake it off. And so we do have uh, number 10 uh, in the box for Indonesia, Jada Dharma. He's uh, batting zero at the moment. Has been hit by pitch uh, this tournament. Hopefully, we'll be hoping that he doesn't get hit by pitch today. Another ball in the dirt. Again, just those New Zealand. Uh, batters, uh, sorry, New Zealand pitchers, just struggling a little bit with the zone, with the with the control. As Roy mentioned earlier, he uh, they just have to find a bit of control. But he is throwing in the 70s, uh, 72 on that last one. So he's uh, bringing the bringing the pace, even though he's uh, issued uh, another walk. This is going to be a little bit of concern for the New Zealand coaches really got to get get this control under control we've got number 55 Dimitri Panama coming into the game now batting uh, batting zero he said three at bat so far two strikeouts so an opportunity for New Zealand here if they can control their pitching Another high ball from uh, Micah Hargrave there. Still hitting those 70s. So he's definitely got the speed. Might want to back off a little bit to try find his control. It's just me in the box at the moment. Roy's just taken a bit of time. There's a beautiful strike there. Panama showing a bunt. I don't think that was his, his actual play there. Although only one down, so could be looking to advance those runners. Bunt up the first baseline. Just one in the dirt. Wild pitch. Runner stays at third. Runner stays on first as well. Indonesia in that, taking that early control. 2-0. Obviously not wanting to risk easy outs here as they build, continue to build their lead. 
two balls, one strike on Panama. Ooh, tough ball there from uh, for Micah. Micah Hargrave, just a little bit high. Pitching at that 72 again, but just struggling with that zone, Roy. Yeah, like we've said, that's, this has been the curse for this New Zealand team. It's thrown enough strikes to put pressure on the other team. There we go, that one in the zone, 69. Just, I did mention while Roy was away, maybe he wants to back off a little bit, get that control sorted, find that zone. There, yeah, 69 mile pitch for a strike. It's going to be a full count now. Runner goes. Shane, oh, there we go. It is, oh, no, it is a walk. walk. It is um, a walk. Uh, Shane, not. That's uh, interesting there. The runner actually had an opportunity from third to break for home on what was actually a needless throw down to two. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, as I mentioned while you're away, Roy, I think, you know, Guam's taking that early lead here. No silly outs now as they continue to build that lead. Just uh, uh, Only one out here. Bases loaded situation. Just correct you there, Samuel. Of course it is Indonesia that's... Oh, Indonesia. Taking the lead. Yeah. <laughs> I, I know that uh, the head starts to spin. It's particularly for you trying to learn all of these players' names. <laughs> A little less pressure on me. I think you've got enough pressure to be dealing with Roy as... <laughs> A big, big thank you to Roy for and Central City Baseball for bringing uh, these broadcasts, either live or at replays. Um, big investment from Central City Baseball and reaching out, and that is the the community spirit here at base. Uh, you know, in in New Zealand baseball, we all got jobs to do, and we all try and do it. Beautiful strike there at 68 miles per hour from Hargraves. Um, big thank you to Roy for learning on the job, getting these cameras up, getting them in position, learning how apps work, so a little bit more grey around, uh, around around the noggin, Roy, but you've done fantastic, mate. It's been a, uh, it's been a learning curve, Samuel. It's, um, unfortunately, we had a bit of a customs hold-up on this equipment that we're using, which has actually made this the test case. Uh, not ideal. Um, We've tried to put out enough that particularly the families of these players overseas can can actually get to see their kids performing on an international stage. Beautiful stroke there from Hargrave. At 71, so there we go, a bit of control and that speed. And absolutely, Roy, you know, we've both uh, travelled. We, we were lucky enough to be on our Korean trip last year. and. So important, you know, so many parents or family members that can't travel um, because of travel costs or COVID or uh, everything else. And uh, so so streaming is the next week's thing, isn't it? Absolutely is. As we see Micah catch him outside corner. Can I help you, sir? No, thanks. Just looking. <laughs> Absolutely beautiful strike out there at 73 miles an hour. First strike out of the game, uh, which is good, which brings number 31, Kenzie Trisnati, to, uh, to the plate, batting at 160. Micah finding the zone, finding a bit of control late here in the innings. And it's funny how momentum can turn around. Bases loaded, two runs in, only one out, and now out, all of a sudden two it's two outs out with the strikeout. And they can get out of the innings, and momentum could suddenly turn New Zealand's way. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is this is going to be great for New Zealand if they can get out with just the two runs. We've seen New Zealand able to rally three or four runs uh, in an inning, so two runs is definitely not out of their reach. And of course, first inning of the game, plenty of game to be played. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's in the, the hole. First hit in the hole, in between. Third and second there. That scores uh, something, bringing the score to 3-0 to Indonesia. Great hit. Uh, Just left that ball over the plate a little bit too much. He was ahead in the count. And this Indonesian batter made no mistake. 
both Waru and uh, McKinley trying to go for that ball but just a perfect thread the needle through the eye scenario baseball there absolutely fantastic not trying to do too much with it Samuel that's the key good day, baby. Good day, baby. and he knew he wasn't likely to hit it over the fence absolutely absolutely now we have Rafa Desaparuta here coming in. This is his first at bat of the tournament. So welcome to the tournament. Uh, Rafa. You got a look at him here in the batter's box. Looking confident. He knows he's got a big opportunity here. Looks like he's got some power to him. Might be able to drive one out into the gap. Bring home two runs. Number 27, of course, famous number in, in baseball or in Angels baseball. Not known for uh, postseason batting averages, but definitely an MVP in the regular season. Maybe not, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is. It is great to see. And actually, I do see Indonesia has a 77, which is uh, very famous in New Zealand baseball. Uh, one of the greatest coaches around. <clears throat> Where's uh, 77? <laughs> Of course, uh, Samuel Lever making reference to himself. Oh, a beautiful strike there from Micah at 72 miles. Really settled into a groove now. Throwing strikes, throwing speeds. Uh, wait, my number 77? Are you sure? Now, now, Samuel, don't be like that. <laughs> Still in a bases loaded situation. Micah really needing to close this better down. That one's just on the out. Issues a bases loaded walk after a beautiful strike. That hurts. That brings Indonesia to four nil this inning. And head coach Tayer again visiting his pitching two visits in the first inning. This is this has got to hurt, Roy. Yeah, this is rough. This is. Um this is a New Zealand team that would have been hurting after their their first two games. They, um, I wouldn't even say they had opportunities against their career team. They they had the game in the bag, to be they quite did. honest. They did. Last inning heartbreak, isn't it? Against Guam, they had opportunities. They were always behind and they would have been looking to get ahead in this one and unfortunately so leaving Micah Hargraves on the mound showing coach showing him that he's got confidence to be able to end this inning so let's see what Hargraves does now after that little visit we know he can throw strikes are we back to the top of the order here Samuel Miss this uh, batting number. But we are, we are actually up to the um, back to the top. Don't worry, Samuel. I've got Razia. you. Thank you. <laughs> so top of the order after the first inning. Well, Any time you bat around in the first innings, you've got to be feeling good for the game. Just low and inside, throwing that 70 miles an hour, so sitting in that 69 to 73 window. This is really just taking the wind out of the crowd. I mean, they had a, quite a big New Zealand crowd on the embankment here at Fillet Field, and uh, they've gone quiet. Beautiful strike there, beautiful strike there. 73 miles on that strike. I see, I see Dale Hargrave up against the fence, looking anxious, cheering his son on. Just uh, inside again, a little high across the shoulder line. Just missing the zone. Umpire Paul there showing a 1-1 count. Well, there will be some scrambling going on with the New Zealand Brains Trust right now. And that is foul. They would have been hoping that Indonesia. Thomas Penny could get them through a few innings and, and the whole plan is now going out the window very fast and if they have to pull Micah as well and we see a third pitcher in the first innings, it will be interesting. We we have time, just, uh, just that foul ball still on the field. 
Uh, Roy, we talked a bit about it yesterday, pitching, uh, pitching staff, pitching rotation, and uh, as we as we mentioned, the winner of today uh, goes on, plays plays in that second, third playoff. And you're really going to need pitching for tomorrow um, to get through into the final. So this is this is, as you mentioned, is going to be hurting that New Zealand rotation, isn't it? Beautiful strike there from Hargraves to go, trying to uh, catch up to it, doesn't, and let it through him at 71 miles an hour. Fantastic pitch from Hargraves, gets him out of the innings. Indonesia taking that early lead at 4-0. They'll be hoping that their uh, bats come alive. We're going to get an opportunity to see Indonesia on the mound shortly. What do you think the coach is saying to his batters right now, Roy? Well, I hope he's saying don't look at 60 mile an hour fastballs down the middle because we saw a little bit of that yesterday, this New Zealand team, they, the opening pitches. They were finesse pitches, but they were leaving them in the heart of the plate and these New Zealand batters were, were looking at them. Yeah, absolutely. We uh, New Zealand only scoring four hits uh, yesterday compared to Guam's eight hits. Guam really taking uh, taking advantage of their hits, bases loaded situations. New Zealand just not getting the hits when they needed yesterday. So let's hope they uh, warm the bats up today. It was a bit chilly today, Roy. Uh, you know, low uh, low 16. I think it was even colder this morning. How do you think the Indonesians will be feeling? I don't think this will be quite like temperatures back home. Sammy, we're talking about a team that decided to go for a swim at the beach yesterday. I think that they're up for it. <laughs> they're up for it, yeah. few of them uh, wearing undergarments, just trying to stay warm out there. But, yeah. I, you wouldn't catch me in the beach in late March here in uh, New Zealand, especially when we have a southerly Antarctic breeze coming through. It's uh, mad. To be fair, you wouldn't catch me at the beach in January swimming either, but... No, that is a fair call. Point. Or December. <laughs> or December, no. So we've just seen New Zealand coach Eton Laird walk past. Uh, did you pick up anything from uh, his, his mannerisms here, Samuel? Or do you think he's um, you think he's feeling confident here? Oh, look, I must say Eton Laird, he is cool as a cucumber, doesn't show emotion. He just walked past, gave us a little smile. Send something to TP, who's helping us uh, off to off to my left here with uh, the the Raider gun, and uh, of course his hood up. He's just going to be sitting on first, saying, "Hey, just guiding those batters through." One thing I am confident of is that Eton would uh, feel quite comfortable stepping into the box and having a crack at this. He's one of the top batters here in the New Zealand. Premier Division. Oh, he'll be chomping at the bit uh, to, to have a go. So we, there's a small, uh, slow 53 mile uh, breaking ball there before that, a 64 fast. Of course, just warming up here. We just hear uh, umpire Paul Vodonovic just calling for the foot scraper, a, um, a technical uh, utensil to clean out the cleats for the pitcher. As you mentioned, a bit of dew on the ground early, so that yeah. pitcher's mound was just a little bit damp. We've seen another change here. Shane Scanlon moved into the leadoff spot. Leadoff spot. Let's see what Shane, uh, Shane can do uh, for New Zealand. Trying to get this uh, set up. Now he is batting a 3.30, so good numbers up there, and he'll be looking to add to that average today. Let's see what Indonesia serves up. In first pitch, bottom of the first. Uh, bottom of the first. That is a 62 mile fastball down the middle, middle strike. Scanlon just leaving it, having a look. And uh, if he gets that again, I just can see that ball going far, Roy. He can demolish a ball. He's, he's not a small lad, Mr. Scanlon. Just higher the zone there for a 1 1 count. O optimistic, uh, optimistic framing of the ball there from the Indonesian catcher. I was 
a good uh, glove down play, but slightly optimistic, yes. <laughs> Shane taking commands from his coach, head coach Tyre, on uh, who's coaching third base today. There's that breaking ball that we saw in the warm up, 56 miles, so a nice uh, separation of speed, but landing up in the dirt to take a two ball, one strike uh, lead for Scanlon. One of, the, one of the things that these New Zealand batters have been struggling with is the adjustment to this sort of speed of pitching. So in our local competition, we have a lot of guys that try to throw some some hard fastballs. They're typically facing sort of 70, even up to 80 mile an hour pitching, and having to adjust to the slower pitching has been difficult. Only 61 mile an hour there. 61 mile fastball down the middle. Scanlon saw it, went for it, but fouled behind to bring up a 2 2 count. And that one in the dirt to bring up a full count. I can tell you that the team that wins this tournament that's going to be travelling to the World Series is going to pay some decidedly crisper pitching. Absolutely, going up against some pretty solid teams over there in Easley. Okay. Teams that deserve to be there. Full count. That one is foul. Pop up foul behind us. That's good work there from Shane. I think that pitch, good while well, it might have been a touch high, you don't want to leave that in the hands no. of the umpire. That, well, I believe that was a good fight off swinging that sword. Just protecting the zone, and I like that. It brings that little mongrel back into that game there, Roy. <laughs> Offend your zone. I like it. Full count here again. Indonesia wanting their first out. New Zealand wanting their first hit. Slightly slower, 60 mile an hour, slightly slower and Shane just coming out ahead of that ball for the first strikeout of the game. Well, when we talk about defending the zone, I think that that one was off the outside of the plate. I'm not convinced it was close enough that Shane actually needed to take a swing at that, but... We welcome Liam Wheels. Hey! To the box. Liam, of course, absolutely crunching one to centre field yesterday. Stand up double. Batting 280 for the tournament so far. Very solid bat behind him. Massive hit into the crowd. 62 miles an hour fastball. Liam sees it. Comes out a little fast on it and Fells it out to left field, over to the crowd, to the waiting parents who... And that was an example of yes. Liam really struggling to sit back on the speed of pitching. He was, of course, at the World Series last year, hitting 80-plus mile an hour pitching, and now he's facing 60. That one high in the zone there to bring up a 1-1 count. Liam showing good patience. 60 miles. Liam will just be reminding himself, sit back, sit back, sit back. There's another one, another 64 mile uh, fastball down the middle. Liam goes for it, fouls it behind. Once Liam. again, seeing him really struggling to just keep those hands back. He's almost too quick through the ball. If Liam can square this up, that ball is going. Time called. I'm not sure whether that was from... I believe that was from the catcher, Roy. I think you might be right, Samuel. Interesting. Maybe a uh, miscommunication in, in their uh, in their signs there. 
55 breaking ball there, Liam. Just fouling it off again, pop-up foul. I don't know how we're going for balls as uh, I believe that's the third one Liam's put over the fence now. Well, I'd like to see him put one over a different fence, Samuel. <laughs> the one out in front of you, Liam. Let's go, son. Yeah. There we go. That is up. That is going centre. Centre field is tracking it. Centre fielder under it, unfortunately, uh, for the second out of the game. That was a good piece from Liam. Finally squared it up. Just couldn't get it over that centre fielder there. Uh, great fielding from Indonesia. Heading into the wind and trying to trying to put a 63 mile an hour fastball over the fence is a big ask, even with Liam's power. Absolutely big ass. Now we have the big unit that is uh, TJ Amosa coming in, batting 200 for the tournament. Another one that can make contact and deliver power at bat. So here we go with a nice uh, 63 mile fastball strike from Indonesia. We've got Rafael Sompton on the mound for Indonesia, player number eight. There we go from TJ. That is a massive hit. That is going to find a gap. That is behind. It is in the park stall. TJ rounds first base, hits second, rounds second. He is going. He is on third. He's going to hold on third. Massive two man cutoff to get that ball back into the diamond. Stand up triple, that gives you an idea of how far he hit that ball right centre. Actually, very similar to the ball that Liam Hay hit yesterday. And we've seen a big difference here in that we didn't have the couple of walks before it. Absolutely smoke that ball. That fence line out there is at 364 feet. And uh, don't think he quite hit it, but came very close to it. Stand up triple. Roy, that has to be a confidence builder for the young men. Absolutely. In fact, you're not even doing it justice, Samuel. It's 387 out there. Oh, 387? Correct. Three... 364 is to right field. Oh. With 387 to right My... centre where he hit that one. My apologies. That is... Reading the wrong mark. That is monster hit. Had all the fielders on the back pedal. Great work from Indonesia getting it in there. Two man cut and holding him at third. We have Messiah number 44 taking uh, taking the plate now. He's betting 400 for the tournament. Checks check swing there for a ball from Indonesia at 61 miles, just low and inside. TJ chomping at the bit over at third base, two out, so any hit and he is coming home. Yeah, Yellen really wanting to close that, that uh, gap that Indonesia built early on. Of course Indonesia leading this game 4-0. Yellen wanting to get on board, two out in this inning, TJ on third. Sitting on two balls. So you see there the Indonesian catcher, obviously that's the signal for a pickoff. He actually just stands up and outside. It does make it fairly easy to read. <laughs> fairly obvious. Oh, big hit there from Messiah. Puts it into left field there. Just beats the third baseman who was trying to hold TJ on the bag. Just out of position there. TJ scores. Messiah safe on first. New Zealand are on the board. 4-1 to Indonesia. Two out with Messiah. Getting an RBI single. That was off a 65 mile fastball. Messiah doing a great job to keep up with it. 
Hey, turn it on! Here we, here we have yesterday's pitcher, Tongaroa King, coming in to at bat now. Yeah, the power doesn't stop for this New Zealand team. Certainly have some big human beings in the middle of this lineup. have any stats for King, any batting stats, so this is possibly his first game at bat for the tournament. I think that's with that new outfield alignment. We had been seeing uh, Blake Percy out there. I think that was a foul tip, but the uh, umpire just calls foul. Catcher taking that one right into the thigh, I think. 63 fast. Umpire just uh, burning a little bit of time, as Roy mentioned, the uh, catcher taking that on the inside of the knee or the inside of the thigh. It's uh, not a pleasant feeling, is it, Roy? Catchers are built different, Samuel. They can take that. Smile on his face. Yeah, a little, a little hop, let's go. Yep. He knows what's at stake. He just eats just it up, he's ready one, to go again. One out away from retiring the New Zealand side. <laughs> Messiah's gone, he is off. That is a hit from Tongaroa King. Unfortunately, centre fielder is under an easy catch out in centre field there, or centre left field and uh, that retires the side but New Zealand getting on the board shortening that uh, Indonesian lead um, with a 4-1 score line uh, a little bit unlucky at some of those at-bats there Roy but um, great effort from TJ to get that standing up third and great work from Messiah batting it in absolutely you will see both uh, Liam Hay and Tangara making nice contact but centre fielder out there if the New Zealand bats can keep making that sort of contact, then what they really need is some shutdown innings. And what's been hurting them all tournament long is walks. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got sticking with Micah Hargraves up on the mound today. Um, let's see if he can refine that zone. Struggling with a few walks. We'll just get a little look here as Mikey goes through his warm-ups. Great pitch there. He'll be wanting more of those. See the infielders doing their routine. Old Harvey, who's playing shortstop today. Just talking to uh, McKinley and shortstop. Making yeah, sure Harvey, they've got their... Harvey at second, Samuel. Oh, sorry, yes, Harvey at second, McKinley on shortstop. They're just talking, making sure they've got their communication down pat. Making sure that they're not going to let anything through today. Here we go, number 34, Keenan Trasindi up to bat, of course we are uh, at the beginning of the order, Keenan batting that 160 for the tournament, wanting to add to that average now, Indonesia starting with their songs again, absolutely love the team spirit coming from their dugout at the moment. Great strike from Micah, 71 miles an hour down the middle there to Cindy Tristanati, sorry, having, uh, just looking at it, couldn't do anything to do with it. New Zealand in reply, the New Zealand dugout uh, making some noise of their own now. We have a high boo there. And there we go, oh big hit, but that is going to be foul right field there. 
catching up to a 67 mile fastball taking some uh, orders from his coach who's coaching third base today just telling him hey don't come early on it time it up time it up umpire Paul Vodonovic showing off his speed there cleaning up those foul balls in a way 71 mile Trisnati just leaving it is it a 2-2 two -two kill zero outs top of the second throws it down to first Messiah there easy out for the first out of the top of the second of course, the batter running on a drop third strike. Now we have number 23, Athaya, coming into the uh, coming into play here. Betting 200 for the tournament. Moves the tripod. One fence panel also. Hargrave will be feeling good about that first out. Beautiful strike down the middle there, 71 miles an hour, showing great control there for that pitch. Just as that southerly breeze is starting to pick up, Roy. Yeah, I must admit, I'm starting to regret wearing shorts today, Samuel. No, we can't all be smart, Roy. <laughs> oh, they are coming out early to meet it, a 71 again. 71 mile, they are coming, just meeting it a little bit early, fouling it into left field there behind his... Uh, Coach on third base there. Sitting on two strikes. So Hargrave's in control here. That is a pop-up. That is high. It is travelling foul. Messiah's under it. Messiah, a bit scared of the fence. The play was on. It did land inside, but uh, Messiah just couldn't see where that fence was. Well, that's a real shame, Samuel. Micah doing a great job on the mound. Got the pop-up, that's what you want. Just that, uh, that southerly that we've talked about, as I mentioned, just picking up and uh, possibly driving that ball a little bit further right than Messiah thought. That's a ball on the outside from Micah. Still pitching in that, that uh, 70s window, 69 to 73, 74. Seen him pretty comfortable on the mound. There we go, another pop up, but that has gone behind us. It's, oh, that is a long way behind us actually. Uh, Athea showing a bit of fight, a bit of mongrel in the box. It's great to see. He is wanting to get a hit here. He's on it, he just needs to square up a little bit. And that is unlucky for Micah who hits the pitcher. Athea takes it on the bat. 70 miles into the, his back. He gives it a little rub. Walks up to first. That is hurting. He's, he's asking for time. Yep, he has asked for time. He is uh, feeling that a bit. Unlucky for Hargroves who was in front of that battle. That was the eighth pitch and... Uh, all strikes bar, uh, bar one. Well, wow, the real shame there is he, he had, he had the out, out, Samuel. Like the pop up, if that pop up had been taken, then the hit by pitch doesn't even doesn't even occur. Mm, that is true. That and that is very unlucky. Now Guam have asked for the medic here. Indonesia, Samuel. Sorry, <laughs> Indonesia has asked for the medic here. They're just going to have a little a little bit of a look. Lay off the <laughs> it looks like he's fine, first medic and of course another volunteer. 
in, in uh, Auckland baseball. We thank all our volunteers and he's giving them the thumbs up. Indonesia ready to go again. Great work by Athaya. We've got the pitcher here, number eight, Sompton coming in. Ready to go. Of course he is uh, hitless through this tournament so far, so really looking for his first first hit of the tournament. Getting a walk in that first inning. So he's off. Big lead, another pop-up. Oh, that yeah. is a drop. That is a drop. Wow. Giving up on two. Uh, that is a difficult way to get an out. That is really difficult. No infield fly rule. One down, runner on first. No, infield fly no. only applies with runners on first and second, first Samuel. And second with one down, yes. So really unlucky there because, of course, uh, if they did take the early lead, he was well and truly into his steal as that pitch was developed. As soon as he saw that pop up, of course, he assumes it's going to be caught and he will have to return to first base. So he hustled back there only to see the ball land. There's a wild pitch there from Hargraves that's going to advance the run into scoring position on the second. Of course, uh, New Zealand, Indonesia with two downs here, um, regardless of, of that last play. They are two downs, so. Uh, a lucky out, possibly after that uh, that pop up over there. Indonesia now really wanting to advance. They want to take that insurance run back that they let let New Zealand get in that in their last inning. That's a great strike for 70 miles an hour down the middle. Great delivery by uh, Hargrave there. Of course, that runner on second now. It's known as a runner in scoring position. A, a single should bring him home, especially with two out. He will run as soon as the ball hits the bat. A little bit high from Hargraves. New Zealand's infield is uh, not interested in holding him on the base. So they didn't take the lead. Of course, they only need the one out. So focusing on the batter here. Big high one from Hargraves. You can see just a little bit, a little bit of frustration on Hargraves' face after that delivery there, Roy. You think he might be uh, struggling a little bit? Oh, I think there'll be some frustration in the fact that he could be out of this innings. He's had a strikeout, two pop-ups, and it's only led to two outs. Mm. It's a very uh, great job from Hargraves on the mound here, creating opportunities for the New Zealand team that they just aren't capitalising on. <clears throat> There's another one on the, in the dirt. Is she going to walk? Shane Scanlon doing good work there, getting across to block that ball. Blocking Holds the it. runner on second. Yeah, absolutely fantastic work there. Coach of Indonesia just sitting there looking. We've got a time here. Head coach for New Zealand heading back out to High Graves. This is his second visit. So we, will see, we will see a pitching change here. It looks like they're going to the big lefty, Blake Percy. Tell us what you know about Blake Percy and his pitching, Roy. Well, Blake pitches for the Hamilton Raiders team. He's um, got long levers, obviously. He should be working in the, the low 70s with his fastball. He, he throws a pretty sharp slider. All I can think here, Samuel, is that uh, this is one of those changes, not so much with this game in mind, this is a change thinking ahead in the tournament. They've looked at what Mike has done on the mound, and they've gone, he's an option for us in either the semi-final or the final, and we need to hold his pitch count down. Of course, uh, only been able to pitch I believe it's 39 pitches before needing a day's rest, so not wanting to hit that uh, 40th pitch. And if they've held him under one day's rest, and that gives you an indication that they're thinking of him for a semi-final, whereas they could pitch him to one day's rest and have him available for a final, assuming 
New Zealand have of course managed to win their semi-final to get there. Of course the uh, semi-final is taking place down at Phillip Field at uh, Lloyd Owlsmore Park in Howick tomorrow 10am for uh, second and third seedings and two o'clock for the first and fourth seeding. Of course the winner of this game takes the third seed, the loser of this game takes the fourth seed. And first and second will be decided between Korea and Guam today at 2 o'clock. So if you are in the Auckland region, come on down. We've got the uh, shack, uh, the uh, snack shop open. We've got the barbecue going. Feel free to bring a coffee down for your favourite commentator. Oh, it would be nice for me to get a coffee. That's a good call, Samuel. Unfortunately, it's not Mike Kovic on the barbecue. <laughs> that would be nice. That would be nice. Well, if you were part of the Renegades, mate, you might have got a bit of that. <laughs> Mike Kovic, obviously from Notorious Moorpork, our favourite place to get a burger out in Avondale. Avondale? Oh, it's a fancy suburb, Samuel. Some people call it Avondale, but... Oh, yeah. Million dollar suburb Some now, so Avondale. Some too, but it's actually central. That's true. That's true. You wouldn't want to claim it as central Auckland. You'd want it to be west, because west is best. West is best. Go. But, central, but central is the best club in baseball. Oh, let's keep it non-biased here, mate. Let's keep it non-biased. <laughs> All right, so we uh, we do we do have uh, Percy on the mound just completing his warm up here. Kanama back in the box. <laughs> so interesting here, uh, Blake Percy. The key here is find the zone. We need him throwing strikes. The Indonesian team, I think they will be patient. It is something that New Zealand has struggled with both yesterday and today. There we go, a beautiful first pitch. 68 miles down the middle to take that first strike. Runners, of course, in first and second. So real in real damage control here. Big ask from Percy. We're two down, just needs that final out. That one high and away for the first ball, sitting on a 1-1 count. Indonesian coach barking out the instructions. He's on edge today. He's had a big job this week. That is a great pitch. Inside slightly there. Panama looking it, loving it. 62 miles down there. Indonesian coach does call time here. Come and give some instruction it to us better. Two strikes. This is possibly the last strikeout if Percy can deliver it in the zone. Last out. Let's retire Indonesia. That's what New Zealand will be thinking of. Loving the uh, Under Armour cleats that Percy is wearing today. Of course, a big fan of Under Armour baseball gear. Disclaimer. Andrama is not a sponsor of this production. No, they're not. But uh, it's the only clothing brand I wear. And there we go. Third strike sends him swinging, sitting down on a 72 fastball down the middle. Maybe a slightly high. Better went for it. Sits down, sits Indonesia down. New Zealand, damage controlled inning. Fantastic work at bat coming up. New nickname, BP. Great to see that emotion from Blake Percy after that. New Zealand team is fired up for this one, Samuel. Oh, absolutely. And how could you not be? What a fantastic start to the baseball game. <laughs> so both of these teams, Samuel, and sitting in the same situation as my Oakland Athletics, Oh, and two. Yeah, my angels too. <laughs> Actually, we own one because we didn't play yesterday. <laughs> of course, the MLB season just started. Uh, first games actually over a week ago as Dodgers and uh, and Padres played an opening series in Korea. Exciting initiative from MLB taking the game to the world. Of course, uh, world baseball on the rise. Um, with a, a big world tour from the majors as Roy pointed out starting off from Korea but we're also going to be visiting uh, the UK this year and also uh, Mexico City of course spring training over in um, uh, oh, 
one of the Caribbean islands, I forget its name. So you apologize for that. It would be. You might even Sam. Nope. <laughs> um, and of course next year it sounds like Japan is confirmed for a visit from the Dodgers and uh, possibly Germany being added to the world tour as well so MLB doing delivering great product worldwide of course New Zealand being ranked 44 in the world at the moment Indonesia unranked we've got Guam ranked at 33 and of course the powerhouse Korea ranked at Four. Of course that is adult standings or country rankings not really coming into play here Roy. No they're not Samuel. Interesting of course the Dodgers will be looking forward to that Japan trip. They need to make as much money as they can to pay for that mammoth contract that they handed out to Shohei. Record $700 million for 10 years on Shohei Otani. Of course all deferred. Only $2 million a year. $600 or 68 million deferred every year until uh, 2034. Big call. So here we go. First pitch was a ball to McKinley. Paul just giving some uh, orders to the catcher here. I think just trying to watch for a balk here. Asking his pitcher to make sure he's set. A bit of courteousness from uh, umpire Paul behind the plate today. Now McKinley betting a little bit down the order here. Be looking for, for uh, his first hit of the game. There he goes, that is up, that is going to centre, centre is running in, he's a little bit short, he's down on the ground, he fumbles it, McKinley on first, he's looking at second, no he's going to be start holding at first, McKinley great first at bat, great opening, putting a runner on the base, this is what we need from New Zealand, as Roy would say, a little bit of mongrel being shown from New Zealand here, it's fantastic to see. McKinley batting uh, 160 at the start of today's game, so bumping his average up uh, today to three uh, or to 240, sorry, roughly. We've got Max McKay, our right fielder today, taking the box. He did a fantastic little bopper out to left field yesterday uh, to score a couple of runs to, to start New Zealand's rally. There's a little bump down left, unfortunately going foul. Getting some orders there from uh, head coach. McKinley looking, he looked like he was going for the steal, then remembered the sign for the bunt. Max getting his eye on that ball though, making contact in that bunt. And there's 62 mile pitch, was down low. Ooh, that was a strike on the inside for Max. Max will be a little bit annoyed about that one. McKinley not doing anything silly. We don't want easy outs. Of course, McKinley got stuck in a, in a tough double rundown yesterday. Could have turned the tide of the game if he was safe on base. McKinley goes, there's a steal, there's a throw down, strike three, looking for Max, but McKinley advances on to second. Max takes that third strike, looking on a 63 fastball down the middle. Max will be a little bit upset about that, but does advance the runner. We've got yesterday's pitcher, a great pitcher yesterday, Nico Waru, taking the base, uh, taking the at bat today. Bang it, TK! Need you on, bro! Waru looking for his first hit of the tournament, batting zero at the moment. That one's in the dirt, maybe a little bit just focusing on that runner on second there. McKinley doing a great job just dancing up over there, taking a, a good lead, Go TK. making the pitcher turn to look at him. Got this bro. Great patience from Nico.
temperature, just cooling time, just needing to reset. That southerly, just picking up. Oh, that one in the zone, a beautiful one. Yep, Nico just showing a bit of oh, frustration there. Could have been the one, could have been his one. 63 fastball, that was centre, centre, pinpoint down the middle. Absolutely fantastic work from this pitcher. McKinley just stopping his dancing a little bit out on second. Shorter lead. Pitcher pitches high, that's a ball. Alright, so just the Indonesian coach there, just making sure, of course, as we've talked about a lot, pitching counts really matter here. So he's obviously at his limit for today, but is allowed to finish uh, the the batter, and it gets rolled back to his to to the limit so that he can pitch tomorrow or in the final whenever they decided to to go for it. Nico lining that up, decides to leave it in, and is inside and high, 62 miles. Absolutely, Samuel. Essentially what it is, is the first pitch he threw to this batter will be recorded as his pitch count. And that is the pitch smart standard. Lots of work for the coaches out there. Managing not just the game, but managing these pitch counts as Nico gets a walk. This puts runners on first and second. New Zealand looking to capitalise here with runners in scoring position, wanting to cut that lead. Of course, 4-1 being the score at the moment. It looks like we've got a pitching change here. Number 77 coming out onto the mound. A little bit of excitement from my uh, co-commentator here. 77 is uh, his number. Best number around. This is uh, Willowinko coming in, 77 for the pitching. It just as we've mentioned, so important to get these pitch smart uh, numbers right so that you, you're going into the semis or potentially into the finals with your full uh, pitching staff. Oh, thank you, Ma. There's, uh, of course, our production director there, Trish, passing us coffees. Absolutely fantastic effort today. And, of course, uh, as always, a big thank you to all our volunteers, and especially those that bring us coffee. <laughs> it's all about the coffee for Samuel, so a lot of excitement Ooh. from him. Number 77 it on the mound. Nice. He does believe that this is uh, probably his favourite player in the tournament. Well... Instant marks for wearing the best number around. French vanilla coffee, Roy. Get that in your gob. That is good. Only the best for the best, Samuel. She does look after you, Roy. She does look after you. Well, well funny you say that. It's, uh, it's, it's with you here in the commentary box that suddenly uh, everything's been laid on for us, Samuel. <laughs> what can I say, mate? What can I say? Big thank you to, uh, of course, Hawk, Howick Pakaranga Hawks for uh, getting us a gazebo and uh, just giving us our own little zone to work with uh, today and yesterday. Great shelter from this beautiful sunshine. Little uh, equipment change. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he's warming up at 66. Yeah, here warming up with tracksuit pants. <laughs> just disclaimer, he's always had. Uh, pants on or shorts on putting, putting some track, trackies on so warming up here we I believe he'll touch that 70 Roy mentioned it yesterday once you get into game situations that adrenaline pumping we often see a couple more miles coming out out so uh, let's see if he can tickle that 70 we've got Harvey at the plate here Really, this is a, a critical batter for Indonesia. Number nine hitter, and then we're back to the top. Ooh, in that, that's inside. That is a wild pitch. That's going to advance the runners into third and second. McKinley looking, uh, rounding third, looking 
towards home, decides to hold up there as the uh, catcher retrieves the ball. This is fantastic. Putting runners uh, into scoring position now. The other, critical, the, other, the other critical thing that does, Samuel, it takes a force play out. Absolutely. And Harvey, of course, representing the tying run at the plate. So this is uh, becoming the big innings for New Zealand. Zero out still. New pitcher to work with. Oh, that one in the dirt again. That's wild. McKinley comes, decides not to go for it. Holds back. That actually might have been coach's call. I think I saw him just raise his hand to say, no, no, no. What? No silly outs here. 70 miles, that's what we talked about, right? You you get into that uh, game situation, the adrenaline starts, and uh, they just find an extra few clicks on that radar. I just think that runner at third just didn't have actually a clear sight of just how far that ball had gone away from the catcher. It would have been close, and with no one out. Great cover need... from the Indonesian pitcher as well, right? He was right there at the plate, ready to receive the ball. Well, we just don't need to see base running. Here we go, another wild go pitch. This is going to score McKinley. This is also going to advance uh, Nikal onto third base. Runner scores. That cuts the lead. 4-2. New Zealand will be loving this. 67 mile fastball wild pitch. This is going to be concerning for Indonesia, who is on a new pitcher here, Roy. Yeah, and we've said it a lot in this tournament. When the pitcher comes on, or the runner's on base, it just adds to the pressure. So Hugo sitting on two balls here. There we go, he delivers that strike at 67 miles an hour, so working in that, that high 60s window. Hugo was taking the whole way there. Yep, Hugo now seeing a strike. Let's see if he gets another one. Hugo, no slouch at bat. Will make contact. That one's high. Great work from the catcher. And, uh, oh, my count was wrong. Sorry, that was ball four. So, taking that, taking that walk there. And it looks like going to be another pitching change here. Just 77, just not working out. I know another number 77 that uh, doesn't do well on the mound either. Well, this is an interesting situation, as I believe uh, your favourite player did. He only did he only face one one batter there. Just the one batter. So is there no and, three uh, batter minimum? Yeah, but 77 looks a lot like the mound. <laughs> That is an interesting call, actually. Is there... I actually can't remember how long ago it was that he made that change. I thought he only faced the one better. Was just yeah. the one better. Of course, being replaced uh, for Harvey. Hugo Harvey taking his space on first. We will see if the uh, coaches decide to challenge this. Uh, if there is a minimum batter's faced. Uh, I cannot recall that rule. And there is a lot of uh, different rules played around the world and obviously uh, the most common rules that we follow is that um, the rules of Major League Baseball. I do know from having been at the Senior League World Series there definitely was a three batter minimum there. However, the fact that the New Zealand coaches are just happy to watch this change happen gives us an indication that that potentially there is no issues here. All right, so a new pitcher here, 31. It's been a slight change with our um, production crew and uh, not surprisingly, Mike Kovic is um, a little bit behind on the radar gun, but we'll look to get a reading on this as soon as he picks his game up. So infielder, outfielder, uh, Kenzie Trisnati, number 31. It, interestingly, not listed as a pitcher, uh, but Indonesia going to it. And what is turning out to be an important inning for New Zealand with runners in scoring position and a runner already in to cut the lead. 
So we'll look to get a read in here. It's Mike Kovich working out that it's only one button he needs to press and he should he should be capable of that. It's from imagine that's the settings or something. Yeah. Yeah. 51. So 51 mile an hour, that's um Gonna have to be working on the corners at that sort of speed. If you if you're putting that down the middle as we go to the top of the New Zealand batting lineup, we could see a little bit of a hit parade. New Zealand will be they just won't be wanting any silly outs here, Roy. We saw a couple of unlucky outs yesterday, a double rundown situation where uh, Guam got both outs. They won't won't be wanting to repeat that today. Um, but just just a bit more sparse, smarter baseball, Roy. Yeah, I'd be expecting to see Shane having a little bit of a look early, and I'd expect with this first and third situation, runners on first and third, I'd expect coach Tidia Thompson to put his runner in motion from first and look to get out of that potential double play or force play. And then it'll be hit away time for Shane Scanlon. Now Trisnati uh, warming up in the low 50s, between 51 and 56 okay. window. This could be deliberate to really uh, slow or get the timing off New Zealand, Roy. And that is what pitching is about. Try to mess with the timing of the batter. And sure enough, a ball we do see side. that runner in motion. And so now runners on second and third. In the scoring position, of course, uh, Shane Scanlon representing the go-ahead run at bat. Tying run on second base at the moment with Hugo Harvey. In this situation, Shane will just be looking for a single, I think. In fact, he'll even be happy to take a walk. He wants to just keep this train rolling. Okay. So what this inning is doing though, it's getting this New Zealand crowd back into it. We are hearing a lot more noise from the uh, left side of the field here, Roy. They are back in this, they feel it. Oh, and here we go. That is a ball. That is advancing the runners. A run scores home kneecap. We will take the runs any way New Zealand can. That brings it to 4-3 uh, to Indonesia. Okay. Um, and that, that was unlucky because that was a beautiful pitch down the middle. Well, I will tell you that Coach Carlo from Belgium, he's... Uh, an international pitcher of note. He knows what a balk is. Paul Vodonovic just getting confirmation there. One out. One out. And we've got Carlo, who was our umpire behind the plate yesterday. Of course, calling a balk in that game and uh, calling a balk in this game. Just explaining to the... Uh, just... Just explaining to the Indonesian coach uh, why he's called it. Just explaining the uh, double leg pump there. And it's going to be a balk every time. Indonesian coach just relaying that message to his pitcher. He doesn't want to see that happen again. Another balk and that will tie the game for New Zealand. Just telling them, make sure when on that leg kick, that leg raise, you've got to keep the gloves together before breaking. Smart work there from the coach, really taking that almost as a free mound visit, getting an opportunity to talk to his pitcher. Sitting on two balls. That last pitch would have been a strike if it wasn't called a ball. That one in the zone, 58 miles an hour, so that's his fastest pitch of today. A little bit of anger perhaps after the pork, putting a little bit extra into it. Sitting on a 2-1 count. New Zealand, one run behind. Runner on third, there's another strike. Scanlon, not quite sure about that. 57 just on the outside. Scanlon looking. Interesting situation here, the Indonesian infield playing back. They're actually giving this run up. Shane just needs to get bat on ball, ground ball will score the runner. There we go, foul. Scanlon finally swinging that bat, just fighting it off. Now that ball was probably a little bit low, probably could have left it, but as we've mentioned, I like it, just fighting it. 
Two strikes on. You don't want to leave it up to the umpire, protect Samuel. Yeah, exactly. Protect your zone. Don't leave it up to the umpire. It was a 58 ball low and away. Foul off. Oh, that coffee was fantastic. <clears throat> Here we go. We've got a 2-2 two -two count. Scanlon's looking. Leaves it. Leaves it on the outside. Possibly the same pitch that we just saw before when Scanlon uh, fouling it off. Just, deciding to just, out, it just down, 58 mile an hour. That was a good eye on that. Full count. Pressure situation for the batter. Batter goes for it, fouls it off. Protecting the zone. High in the zone ball there. Resume this at bat with full count. Scanlon fouling off the last. New Zealand's got speed on third base. Change just has to be smart. Ground ball scores a run. But he'll take the walk. He takes the walk, leaving uh, Harvey on third base. And he will pass the bat on to Liam Hay. Liam Hay. Now we saw a great hit from Liam Hay in that first inning. Uh, went far, unfortunately centre fielder just under it, able to pick him off, uh, catch him out and uh, he'll be looking to redeem himself here. Two runners on. Runners on the corners. First and third. As much as he'd like a safe hit, if he does the same thing again, that would bring home a run. It'd be a sacrifice fly. Runner goes for second. No throw down attempted. Smart play there. We know Hugo has, has uh, speed there on third. Looking for his opportunity. He would have been gone if, if that catcher decided to uh, throw that down. Evans in, in the zone. Liam Hay is fouling it off. Fouling it off behind him. Well, Indonesia cannot 61 afford. 61 miles from this pitcher, so he's really starting to warm up now. They cannot afford to walk, Liam. We saw TJ crunch one to right centre earlier. You do not want TJ coming up with bases loaded and only one out. There we go, straight through the middle. Threads the needle right over second base. That's going to bring in the one oh, runner, Harvey. Coach holds, uh, holds Scanlon on third. Lee, Liam takes the chance to round first onto second there uh, after a drop ball in the middle there. That's some really that, smart base running from Liam Hay. I was surprised that they held Shane. I thought that... Saw the opportunity and went for it. I thought the big diesel could have chugged his way home, but Liam absolutely focused on what is happening. Saw the ball go loose, and he's taking second base. And I think, I I think, think it comes back to what we were saying, Roy. They just don't want any silly outs. No easy outs here, so holding Scanlon there. Scanlon was... A, a, Quite far around third base before, yeah, being, uh, before he realised he was being held back. Um, but more importantly, Harvey home bringing the score 4-4. Four, four. TJ in the in the box, 58 high in the zone, ball. Hey TJ, we're really starting to see the effect of the intimidation factor of the middle of this New Zealand order. Ooh, big hack from TJ, just over top of that ball. That was a great 61 mile delivery from the Indonesian pitcher there. Hey, Indonesian pitcher looking at at this man in the, in the box, but then he looks to the on-deck circle and sees Messiah over there and goes, geez, what do I do? Still sitting on one out here for the New Zealand team as that's delivered high, 60 miles out of the zone. It's going to be a ball. Two balls, one strike. TJ really looking to march his runners around. We've got runners on second and third in scoring position. Ooh, 
through that one in the zone. TJ just fighting her off. Fell behind another 60 miles an hour. That has knocked our camera, I believe. No, no, no the camera. It gave you a bit of a, a rock and roll there, but we've got a robust setup here. This is a 2 2 count. Big, big budget setup. It's not going to be put off by one little foul ball. I'm told that we're going to double the budget next year, Roy. Yep, absolutely. Or even triple it, Samuel. <laughs> ball inside and down for a full count on TJ Amosa. He'll be, hey, he will take a walk, but I know TJ, he will be looking for a piece of that bat. Well, he showed us the power that he's got in the first innings. There and we there go. There it was. Gets Carlo out of the way, straight through the middle, through second and first. It's a bobble from uh, the oh. centre fielder, and they still hold Hay on third. Even they, maybe the coach missed the mistake from the centre fielder there. But that is the go ahead run of uh, Shane Scanlon scoring. It is now 5 for New Zealand. They have turned this around, Roy. They must be feeling good right about now. They're pumped up in the, in the dugout over there. I think the coach maybe didn't realise the runner he had. Wheels, say, hey? I think he would have cantered home. But after some of their base running blunders yesterday, you're, you're right when you said it earlier, they're just looking to play it safe. They're looking to keep the train rolling. So it looks like we've got a few uh, changes here, both fielding and pitching, um, as they uh, try and shut this inning down from New Zealand. A really good strong inning from New Zealand go ahead inning taking 5-4 lead after being down 2-0 or sorry 3-0 4-0 earlier in the game see coach Ayrton Laird striding across the diamond there cool as a cucumber mate doesn't show anything this is number 9 for Indonesia Samuel goes to his uh, note. Toka Razia. He's a pitcher, infielder, outfielder, and man on many trades. Let's see what he can do. Oh no, we've changed again to number 10 now. Must have Number 9 must have done one warm up and said, no sorry. Number 10, you take this. That is Ajara Dharma, uh, who plays infield, not listed as a pitcher. Let's see what he can do for this Indonesian team who who were in control of this game but have seen it slide away. He is pitching in that 60s window, high 50s, low 60s window. I've got a feeling that first pitching option that you mentioned there Samuel, he looked at the next two batters and went no thanks. <laughs> No siree! No, of course, our next two batters being Messiah and uh, Tongarola. Both very capable of driving that ball out into the outfield there. We're talking about a, a couple of lads, both over six foot tall. And uh, Notorious Mopok sponsoring burgers for any home runs. Both, uh, both weighing in, I would assume, at least over 100 kilos. And um, apparently they get that size by having the smash burgers from Notorious Moorpork. Not just one. There's always a competition out there, uh, whether it's Jesse or Mike who makes the best ones. I've got video evidence of that. I can confirm that uh, Jesse Kovic has actually decided to leave the country because he is a clear number two. Brutal, brutal. All right, and here we go. Res resumption of the bottom of the second here. Messiah taking his at bat. Indonesia up there with a new pitcher, really needing to shut this inning down from New Zealand. Runner TJ advancing from first. Catcher not not trying to throw down as we have that runner on third there. Liam Hay. One of the things I like here, Samuel, is these New Zealand batters, they're prepared to pass the baton on to the next guy. They'll take a walk if it's there. Absolutely, absolutely. 
Warm Messiah just scoring up on there. 62 mile fastballs. Got it now, Look at that speed from Tangaroa King out there Ooh. picking up the ball. Messiah foul in that behind him. Hey, Magnum. And that is high. Messiah is no small boy over six foot and that was above his head. Dharma just trying to work his zone, find his zone. Runners still on second and third. Once again we have that situation of a pitcher coming on, runners on base under extreme pressure. That is a beautiful strike. Yes, Messiah saw that and a little bit disappointed in himself that he didn't go for it. Really liking the demeanour of this number 10 on the mound. He doesn't look at all intimidated by the situation. No, absolutely not. That one's high, across the eyes. Messiah looking like uh, thinking that it was ball four. That is ball three though. Hey, Sarah. Looking like he was ready to get down to first and um, hand the baton over to Tangaroa King. Oh, hit, hit, hit by pitch there for uh, Messiah. Shrugs it off, takes his base down on, down on first, Tongaroa King coming up to bat. I like this from the Indonesian catcher, he's been doing a lot of talk to Dharma here. He's right behind him, telling him just to take his time, find his zone. It is great talk. Old uh, head coach Taya barking his orders, hey grounder, you got to run, we've got bases loaded situation here. New Zealand looking to add on some insurance runs. Real opportunity here for Tangaroa King. That is up high. Liam Hay way down the third baseline looking to come home. Just trying to free up those bases. <laughs> Tangaroa King, he's a smart player. He knows that a walk here is an RBI. Oh, and he leaves that one for a two up and away. Tangaroa King taking control with two balls. Come on, Tangaroa! More talk from the catcher here to his pitcher. I like it. Oh, there's a beautiful strike. King just checking his swing, thinking, oh, not me. Ended up being a strike. 62 miles in the zone. Two balls, one strike. Hey, take it off. Oh, that is a beautiful uh, pitch delivered from the pitcher. 63 miles an hour. He's creeping into that mid-60 range now. King trying for it, swinging and missing. Interesting to see here the Indonesian infield drawn in. Ground ball. They'll be looking to make the play at home. That brings up a full count. Three balls, two strikes. Payoff pitch great, coming up. Great. Uh, I think that was a great strategy from the pitcher. Just try to give him something in the top corner. See if he goes for it. Didn't. Missed his zone, unfortunately. Um, but uh, just changing their eye level on for uh, King. Leaves it. Issues the wall. That's a disappointing for that pitcher who seemed to be uh, slightly in control there. But uh, that marches the bases and of course another run scores. 6-4 to New Zealand. New Zealand getting another insurance run. Still opportunities for more. Only one down. Indonesia needing two more outs to retire this team. You saw there the captain of this New Zealand team, Liam Hay. On third base just really applauding that effort from Tangaroa King. Doing his bit for the team. And we are back with uh, McKinley 
who's uh, already batted this order. So we've gone through the rotation here. Tough spot for the pitcher here. The strike zone just shrunk considerably compared to the last batter. Yeah, absolutely changing that zone. That ball being delivered on the inside. Great height, but just on the inside for a ball. Here we go, McKinley seeing that. 64. 64 speed delivery coming down from that pitcher there. So he's he looks like he's got a little bit more to offer. McKinley just fighting that zone for a foul behind. That one high in the zone. As you mentioned, Roy uh, McKinley, one of the shorter members on the team and, and a, a big zone shift from uh, from Tongaroa King down to uh, McKinley there. Yeah, we've gone three six-footers in a row. And now we're into one of our middle infielders. I can confirm though that Corbin has some sneaky power. Corbin doing a great job there just to fight it off. He looks a little bit annoyed with that swing, but uh, you know, as we've talked about, protect your zone. Don't leave it up to the umpire. And I think that was a great foul off. We're sitting on a 2 2 count here. Corbin McKinley wanting to make contact. There he goes! There he goes. This is going to drive in a run either way. That is caught from the centre fielder. That is going to advance third base there. TJ coming in to score that runner. Second base is safe. There's a throw back to second. Messiah was off the bag, but he manages to retreat in time. A great sacrifice fly from Corbin McKinlay for an RBI running in. TJ Amosa, New Zealand scoring another insurance run. Taking this to 7-4, Roy. A massive inning from New Zealand here. Yeah, that's good base running there from TJ. He understood the situation. Tag up. Tag up on a fly ball. Score the run. Corbin did his job. And now we'll have Max Mackay in the box. Max coming back for his second at-bat this innings. Striking out looking in that first at-bat. The little lefty will change the zone once again. It is two down for New Zealand. Shows the bunt but pulls it back for a ball. 60 miles an hour from the pitcher. Max can lay a bunt down that third base line. It would advance everybody. He's definitely got the speed to make it up to first safely. See the third baseman now playing slightly shorter. That one high, out of the zone for a ball. 63 miles. Max again, just showing his bat. We know he can bunt. We know he can hit. Getting his commands from the coach now. This is the first lefty that the pitchers faced. There is a foul. A little surprise here, I thought with the two ball count that they might have left Max to um, just to take a pitch there. So that is a bunt, but gone foul. Quite a lot of pop off that bat as well. You don't see bunts uh, popping up like that over the fence. Maybe an indication of the power that Max possesses. Pitch here. It's in the zone. You know, he that, still looks happy. I think that was a smart take. That wasn't Max's pitch. Coach was happy. He said, not you, not you. Max is known for going opposite field. I can see him just poking one over the third baseman here. That yeah, third baseman playing very short on the grass. Oh, an unlucky strikeout swinging Max's. Yep, he can see he's a little bit annoyed about that. That is the third out. Retiring New Zealand and Indonesia will be feeling relieved about that. Uh, they needed to get out of this order. New Zealand coming from behind and get uh, attaching some insurance right there. Of course, finishing that inning. 7-4. What will 
Indonesia be thinking now, Roy, losing that lead? What do you think they're going to be wanting now? Well, it's a, it's a tough one when you've lost your first two games. Sometimes you can get that feeling, here we go again. Uh, although, they've come to the park today with good spirit. I'm expecting to see some fight from them, Samuel. He's just taking some orders from their coach before before entering the dugout. You like that? The coach, of course, an important role of keeping his team team's heads up. So Samuel, you're an experienced little league coach. What would you be telling your team in this situation? <laughs> uh, yeah, great, great question there, Roy. <laughs> <laughs> now look, I'd be, I'd be telling them, hey, we've still got plenty of the game left. You know, we've, uh, this is only the third inning of, of a seven-inning game. We've still got time. We've shown them that we can bat. We've run up scores in, in that first inning. We can do that again. We just have to wait for our pitch and uh, take the opportunities where we can. That's for the at-bat. When we go out to field, remember to do their job. Simply do the basics right. Get your glove on the ground. Get behind the ball. Don't be letting that ball past you. Just reminding them of the basics there, Roy. Well, I guess that's what makes you such a great coach, Samuel. Positive messages, keep it simple. Just focus on your team doing things right. Absolutely, absolutely. Right. So we just... Try to redo the uh, camera here a little bit as we uh, take the first pitch. We've still got uh, Thomas Penny, no, sorry, uh, Percy up on the uh, mound here. Puts it into the dirt. I think that looks good there, Roy. Great work. It is. It is shaking a bit as he climbs down the fence. Percy again low in the zone. Two balls. This is what Indonesia will have the Indonesian coach will have been telling us batters. Just practice a bit of patience. Wait for that ball. New Zealand struggling a little bit with the control in the zone. There we go, there's ooh, okay, that is I think a great ball at 66 miles an hour. But uh, umpire Paul not liking it. Of course, we are sitting off to the side, so we don't always get to uh, see the true zone that uh, umpire Paul has. What a tough situation here for Blake. It's a long, long time since he finished off that last innings. It is a long time. He's working, working at 67 bit. mile an hour. As he delivers a first walk, and Indonesia will be liking that. You need runners on the base to score runners. To score runs. Here the Indonesian team. A little bit more sullen. Oh, safe on first. New Zealand felt that was in. Almost got a pick off. That is something that Blake is known for. He got one in his uh, first game that he pitched in. Few of the Indonesian team there still keeping that song going. That's on the outside. Trisnadi not liking it at all. Saying nope. Shaking it off even before the delivery was complete. So Samuel I can confirm that you got a few fans in the crowd there. We do have uh, some chocolate delivered to us. Oh chocolate on a strike there. 66, mi 66 miles uh, fantastic. Well, of course, chocolate being Easter Sunday here in New Zealand. A happy Easter to all our viewers around the world that celebrate Easter. We uh, hope you have a thank you, sir. Hope you have an awesome day and um, thank you to those that are working on a public holiday. Thank you to those that are spending a beautiful day down at the diamond. Still not a cloud in the sky at uh, almost midday here just absolutely stunning conditions here 
for international baseball. There's a big hit from 31 and straight down the throat of Corbin McKinley in shortstop there. Great take. Uh, unlucky for that batter there. Great pitch from Percy as well. 68 mile an hour and it just seemed as though he just got it off the end of the bat. Might have been just on the outside corner. Nice pitching here from Blake. That is the first out of this inning. Beautiful strike there at 67 miles an hour. I think what we're seeing here, Samuel, we're seeing that, that long break while New Zealand scored all of those runs. Just took Blake a little while to get back into things, but he seems to be rolling now. Got him on the pick Oh, off. and it's an overthrow at first on the pick. That's going to round 77. Down onto third. They throw, the throw is on. Great recovery by, by Mikael there, who's playing uh, playing third base. The throw from Zaya, not quite on point. But Mikael, great clean up and holding that runner on third. This will put a runner into scoring position for Indonesia. He'll be looking to take back some runs after losing the lead to New Zealand in the last inning. And I think you would have seen that play very clearly there, Blake. A beautiful move to have the runner absolutely dead to rights. However, he just spiked the ball throwing it to Messiah. Messiah a little upright trying to scoop it. Actually thought it was in his glove. That is a foul off the better. Runner is sent back. One ball, two strikes. Blake in control here on this batter. This batter is wanting to swing. Scanlon just calling time. Wants to reset his pitcher. This is great control from the catcher. Behind the play. Scanlon showing his baseball IQ there. And pushing that ball that seemed a bit slow. Yeah, 51 breaking ball. Just got outside that zone there for a full count now. Well, it was a nice curveball from Blake. Sometimes you fool everybody with it. Oh, just on the outside. Sorry, it wasn't a full count. It was a 2-2 two -two count. Not quite sure where that one missed, Samuel. 67 mile an hour. 67 just on the outside. Oh, that is a good one. That better squared up on that, but that has gone foul behind us. Wanting to see it. 67 miles, another great delivery from Blake Percy. And Blake Percy just having a little bit of a dance on the dance on the mound, just trying to loosen up. He's smiling, he's enjoying himself. This is what baseball is all about. I love it. I love to see it. Unfortunately, that one in the dirt, putting the runner on to first there, issuing a walk. Going for a walk and out and a walk at the moment. This has been an interesting situation. Obviously, first and third, we've seen it all tournament long. Teams normally put that runner in first in motion, but Blake does have a great pickoff move. So it'll be interesting to see if he looks to actually just take the out of that runner on first, knowing that it could score the runner from third. Let's hope New Zealand's on the same page here. If Blake does decide to pick off, Messiah should be playing home. That is a, a beautiful strike at 67 miles. You Just see, on the inside of that zone, Roy. You see the big lefty. The fact that he's got a move to first is just holding that runner close, which means they're struggling to put him into motion. But he goes. Takes the big throw. Scanlon takes a big throw at third. Nico there with a the clean up. Great work. Couldn't quite pick behind, but uh, great way of holding him. Letting that runner advance to second though. Of course, two runners now in position. The tying runner now represented at the plate. I think the New Zealand field just not all on the same wave wavelength there. Oh, that is a pop up. That is going to be foul. Is it playable? 
No, it isn't. That is an uh, out of the park foul over the fence. 68 miles an hour from Mr. Blake Percy, who's really working this inning now. So you saw on that first and third situation, Shane come up straight throwing to third. However, TK over there at third was not at his base. So just a bit of a communication breakdown. Oh, high in the zone. 73 miles. High cheese. <laughs> but uh, the batter, number nine, TK going for it and swinging and missing on that high ball that is two down now one of the things every pitcher loves that high fastball getting them chasing about 34 Trisnardi taking the taking the plate of course representing the tying run if he can make contact now a grounder here probably scores well definitely scores one might score two these Indonesians are quick high in the zone over the batter's head 66 miles of course two out now so New Zealand field they just have to take the out at one and that'll be the end of the innings Indonesia on the other hand they need a safe base hit that, that one's in the ground 77 over on third not looking for the run even on that wild pitch Scanlon doing a decent job there, got just enough of it blocking that. Stop it, yeah. 67 miles from uh, Percy there. So still working that higher 60, lower 70 window. <laughs> so it's uh, quite entertaining here watching the nervous parents around the diamond and I see Miles Percy, pitcher's father, just chewing his nails. <laughs> Taking all the way there. It's a beautiful strike at 65 miles an hour. I don't like it when a batter just indicates that he is taking the whole way. It does make it relatively easy for a pitcher. Take a little bit off and just throw it straight down the middle. Massive hit from 34. That drops down in between centre and right. A little bubble from our right fielder, Max, there. Big throw to second. He is in safe. That scores number uh, 77 and 27. Indonesia scoring two runs to claw back. Now 7-6 uh, to New Zealand, but Indonesia closing the gap. That was a 69-mile fastball down the middle, and he got all of it, Roy. He absolutely did. It was just a beautiful hit, beautiful piece of hitting. After I'd uh, just said I didn't like the approach he took taking, he then uh, shows me that he knows what he's doing as he absolutely rips one to right field. This Indonesian team, as you said, they're not going to go down with a fight. As we say here in New Zealand, they are bringing the mongrel to the game. They want this. They need this. They are proving that they want it in here. They had themselves a good barbecue last night. They're well fed. This is 66 mile ball. Do love a good barbecue, Roy. And it appears so does this Indonesian team. They're a team with great spirit. They've had everything that could go against them seems to have gone against them. Two of their coaches were unable to travel with the team. One of their players also couldn't make the trip. And um, his, his playing shirt is hanging in the dugout. It's great spirit. One's down low, 67 mile ball. So we see Team Korea turning up in the outfield there for their game this afternoon against Guam at 2 p.m. If you are in the Auckland region, come on down to Phillip Field, Lloyd Ellsmore Park, Cascades Road, and watch the two table leaders, Korea and Guam, go at it. Two o'clock, winner takes top of the table. I'll put you on the spot there, Samuel. What's your pick for that game? Well, I don't think you can go past Korea. Uh, 
a, a massive baseball culture in Korea. We've seen them through the ages. They were challenged by this New Zealand team. And uh, Guan definitely can carry the stone. So it is going to be an immense battle. But I think Korea, they have an extra gear that they haven't quite shown yet. Well, I'll tell you what, Samuel, you say you can't go past Korea, I'm going to do just that. I'm picking Guam in that game. They've looked sharp this tournament. They look like they have come to win every game. So, there's my pick. I'm putting it all on the line. Wouldn't have it any other way, Roy. Of course, there's a ball in the dirt, great block by Shane. Now, of course, New Zealand being the winner or the representative representative team at the last three World Series for the Asia Pacific and Middle East qualifying region and uh, definitely started this tournament on uh, on the back foot losing their first two games they need this one now yeah and you've got two players in the squad that were in easily last year Liam Hay and Tangaroa King and I can tell you, those boys want to get back there. The previous year, of course, it was Guam that represented the Asia Pacific region. Korea, as you say, powerhouses of the game, but they have not actually competed in Senior League in, uh, in many years, if ever. I'm not, not quite sure of the entire history, but it is great to see them here. It is great to see them here. And Really, that comes down to their baseball culture, doesn't it, Roy? I mean, they're a powerhouse in the majors and and uh, do do pretty okay at the intermediate age, but then they start to really focus on their internal competition, their high school baseball over there. Uh, it doesn't leave much uh, for club baseball over there as they all focus on high school baseball at this age. So it is great to see a Korean representation team down here. And, uh, of course, we... We thank all teams, Indonesia, Guam and Korea, making the travel to come down to New Zealand. As uh, tournament director Mark Irwin alluded to yesterday, we've had to travel for the last 20 years. And it is a big ask of our families, Roy. It is a big ask of our uh, community. Um, and so it's great to see New Zealand getting hosting rights and hosting the senior league of Little League. A little bit of controversy here. A little, a little bit of uh, frustration there by Tyler. I think they're talking about that's the third and final warning. So now he has to change pitch it for every visit. Right. I'm not sure that uh, Tidea entirely agreed with the interpretation of the rules. No. As you said, there was a bit of frustration. Runner Run goes. Running from second. Big throw down at third. But he is in there. Safe. Great sliding technique uh, from that runner. Second to third. Absolutely love it. Of course, the opening pitcher for Indonesia, Sultan. Number eight. He is in that box. Interesting there. The, uh, the trail runner, the runner on first. Uh, didn't didn't break for second normal situation there both runners would go there'd be a double steal in this case it's just stealing second to third we'll see if the runner goes from first this time if he does there was a called strike that last pitch i'd be picking two Blake outs to pick in him off. Inning. new zealand really wanting to runner goes stop korea uh, sorry stop indonesia from getting any further runs in this of course new zealand leading seven six Tying run on third, the go-ahead run on second. Something really wanting to put this uh, ball into play and get those guys in. Two out. Percy lines up for his pitch. Massive pitch down over onto first. Messiah's got an easy out. Takes it. Number uh, play three unassisted. Messiah just fielding that ground ball and tagging the base unassisted to retire the team Korea though pouring their way back a little bit which is I believe what the coach definitely would have wanted to see Roy well, they'll be excited about that to give up the lead in the manner that they did to then come fighting back and draw within one 
<laughs> All right, so we have the Indonesian swap over here as we go into the bottom of the third. We have been playing for two hours now. Just dealing with some uh, troublemakers in the crowd, but that's all right. We'll get security onto that, Samuel. Of course, security, uh, <laughs> being our production manager, is <laughs> Coach, uh, <laughs> Coach Ayrton wow. Led, just strolling on over, strutting as he does. That's three. Do they change it? That's three, but when you go out to change a picture, that doesn't count as a visit, right? So I'm, I don't know how many visits there had been. Coach Eton Laird just asking a question, just trying to clarify the rule as we talked about earlier with uh, New Zealand being told that they've had their three visits. Having to change picture for every visit he, he decides to do now. It makes it hard. You're going to be relying on your catcher now to be calling time. No surprise he saw super coach Samuel Lever in the uh, box here and just came over to get some advice. It happens, Roy. <laughs> time to time. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Indonesia here just warming up, staying with the same pitcher. I think they'll like this. We saw we saw enough from this pitcher in the last inning just to keep them in the game. Indonesia really wanting to control this inning now, not let any damage through. And we start in the bottom of the third at 7-6. Just a reminder, the stream brought to you by the friendly team at Central City Baseball Club. And uh, just to my right here, we have the primary sponsor of the club, Peter Hay Kitchens. I'm sure everybody's going to be rushing down to get a new kitchen. And if they are, Peter Hay is the way to go. You're kind, boy. I do what I can. <laughs> And while you're waiting for your kitchen to be made, just a reminder, more pork, the notorious more pork out at Avondale for your, your chicken burger or your smash burger. Right, a few changes here from Indonesia, just checking that line up, making sure we're right. Pitch has gone through his warm up, and Paul just needing a little bit of extra time to get through this. Indonesia with their sharp hats, with their numbers on the side there. Absolutely love their hats. Seems like we've got a little bit of a situation here, Samuel, where one of the earlier substitutions might have been missed by uh, the umpiring team. Questions getting asked all around. Yep. Questions for making sure that Paul's earning his money here today, which of course, just like everyone else here, being uh, volunteers. <laughs> He is not being paid for this. I actually have last year's Indonesian hat, uh, Roy, and I've noticed the different. They've got a the Little League logo on their hat this year. Last year they had the I for Indonesia on it. Beautiful bright red, Asia Pacific on the side. And you see uh, Paul Veronovic just cleaning the plate as we get ready for the bottom of the third. He's actually given the uh, pitcher two more warm-ups here. Stop it. Oh, one more warm-up. Here we go. Batter up. We've got Nikau coming to the plate. New Zealand here uh, now in command of the game. 7-6. They just want to protect their lead. I think uh, coach will be saying to them, hey, no silly outs. Let's play smart baseball. Could be a challenge for your uh, commentating skills here, Samuel. See if you can commentate and eat crackers without making a terrible noise. Mm. Tasty. New Zealand team will just be looking to get rolling again and pile on some more runs. Indonesia got back in the game, but if if these bats can just keep uh, keep on going, absolutely. They'll be feeling very confident. New Zealand really needing those insurance runs, but it is only bottom of the third. We are set for a long game, as I mentioned. We've been playing for just over two two hours. We're still in the third inning. Just 
Just over two hours, Samuel. You sounded at ten. My word. Are we? Uh, are we Five past. Are we on track here for a record setter? The first game of the tournament, obviously, four hours seven minutes. That is a big pop up. It is going to be going foul, and it is foul over the fence there from Nikau. Waru, Waru squaring up on it, wanting the piece of it, wanting to get on base early to give New Zealand some insurance runs. Just been, uh, just been visited here by uh, Regan Soper. And um, there we go, another pop-up foul. That's over our heads there. Obviously Aaron Soper also here, Canine Collective. So if you're needing your dogs walked or a homestay while you're away, visit the Canine Collective. 63 mile ball there. Nico on it, but popping up and fouling. Just after some balls there. We've had quite a few balls go over our heads there, Roy. And uh, Paul's just needing a bit of a top up there. Of course, number 10, Dharma, finding his finding the zone. Really challenging uh, Nikawaru here, who's really having to fight his own protector zone. Just a little bit high at 63 miles an hour. Well, I said Regan Soper just uh, coming in to visit with us, starting shortstop from the New Zealand team at the World Series last year. He's just making his way into the commentary box. We'll get a few words from Regan soon. Oh, that one high in the zone. Indonesia not liking that one. They thought it was a strike. They, Dharma issuing a walk to get the lead off better. On to first base here, New Zealand will be liking that. Hugo Harvey now taking the plate. Looks like um, Regan's just signing out a few autographs. He'll be with us soon. Taking a bit longer than I thought. Hey Roy. Good to have you join us, Regan. Yeah, great to be here. Oh, good foul ball there from Hugo Harvey on a 62 fastball down the middle. So, Regan, obviously you were in uh, Easley yep. last year. Yep. What's on the line for these guys? What was that experience like? I mean, it was great. It was, I mean, the competition was pretty high. Um, and it was an awesome experience just to go out and, you know, compete with some probably future MLB players. And, um, Hugo yeah. Harvey just fouling that one off. Sorry, Regan. What was your highlight of the trip, Regan? Um, ooh. Uh, five guys was pretty good. Oh, yeah, <laughs> five guys is my favourite. Well done. Yeah. So this is um, it's my favourite. This is shortstop from the New Zealand Senior League team playing in the World Series. Went to Atlanta to a Major League Baseball game and the highlight of his trip was a burger at Five Guys. Yeah, I mean, it was pretty good. <laughs> the fries are great, isn't it? <laughs> it was my, my, uh, How are you? How are you? Love it. Uh, slower pitch there. It uh, came in high. Hugo, just showing that plate discipline at the moment. So what would you have it? Oh, fantastic guys. work. I had, I had a chicken sandwich at Five Guys. Oh, hey, hey, hey. Chicken. Always go for the double. So, Regan, I don't know if you've been able to see much of this tournament, but who's, who's your pick? Who do you think is going to be travelling to the World Series? Um, I got to back New Zealand. I think um, you know they they lost a nail biter to Korea, um, and I think that might have just been you know nerves or, or whatever. But I think. They're going to come back. I think they're going to win this game, and then I think they're going to beat whoever they're playing in the semis. And then, yeah, I think I think they're going to pull through to go again. Well, I guess that would be the classic situation. It's yeah. not how you start a tournament; it's how you finish it. That is ball four to walk Hugo Harvey. It's going to advance uh, Nico Waru onto second base as well. Runner in scoring position for New Zealand. They'll be happy about this. 
trying to search for some insurance runs after Indonesia scoring a couple in the last inning. Looks like we've just got a bit of a, a gear change. No pitching change. Dharma is done. Yet another pitching change. So one of the interesting things in uh, this level of baseball, Regan, you'll be well aware of it. Yep. Everybody needs to pitch. Oh, yep. <laughs> Very aware. <laughs> Special, special pinch runner being applied. Obviously, you're allowed two of those during the course of the game. Ben Bon Giovanni coming on. So, Regan, thanks for uh, giving us the honour of visiting us here in the commentary box. Yeah, thank you for your no, time. Yeah, mate. No, thank you for having me. <laughs> well, we'll let, get, let you get back to your fans. Yeah. Just um, invoice the ABA. You'll get paid. It's just confirmation there from yeah. Paul Vodonovic, the special pinch runner has been applied. He knows that there's only a two per game. And, you know, we were talking about this yesterday, Roy, lots of uh, um, rules for Little League that, you know, you might not have in your uh, everyday uh, club league. And so everyone's got to be on the, on the same page when it comes to the rules and of course we had a rules meeting we had that on Wednesday Roy you went along to that um, and then of course make, just making sure that everyone's on board when it comes to game time yeah well it is interesting I mean it's not just the rules it's um, the amount of paperwork that gets applied in this proof of residency proof of where players go to school you have to play for your local charter so this New Zealand team they're representing New Zealand but they come from this local Auckland charter and obviously there is affidavits that have to be submitted proving that each one of these players either resides or goes to school within the Auckland charter boundaries the advantage of that of course is for the likes of you and I, Samuel, we know all of these players. We see them in our local competition every week. Yes, I, I have had the pleasure of coaching uh, quite a few of these lads, uh, either at, at club level or uh, obviously being in the major program for the last five years. I have seen these boys come through that program, of course, interrupted by um, COVID, unfortunately. But um, still, still keep a keen interest on, on watching where they go and what they do in their career baseball, and uh, looking forward to it. And I suppose that's one of the privileges that I have as the major coach, Roy. We get to follow those players through both the intermediate level and junior level. Absolutely. So we're seeing a new pitcher come on. He's he's working around that 60 mile an hour mark. And he's coming on to face the top of the New Zealand lineup. And once again, we have a pitcher coming on with runners on base. A little bit of extra stress. Yep. As Shane Scanlon looks to go to work. So top of the order here. <coughs> it's a little bit high. The catch is saying, hey, come on, we need to go down. <laughs> New Zealand dugout starts starts singing. To the minor starts supporting their boys. Oh, that is a high one, and it's, and it's fair to Run say. Runner goes. Oh, and there's an overthrow on third, but backed up by a shortstop. Great play there. 57 mile over the head of uh, the better there, and we've got a broken helmet uh, for the catcher. So. I'll tell you what, a decent throw there, and uh, TK could have been in trouble coming into third, but the throw sailed on him a bit. So they advance both runners, of course. Uh, Nico on to third, and Harvey on to third. A big catcher, Shane Scanlon. Yeah. Two balls yeah, no Shane Scanlon. Oh, and that one in the zone. 
Shane sees it, he swings and he misses. 59 miles an hour in the zone strike. Two one count. Shane leaves that, it's up high over his shoulders. Leaves it. Three balls, one strike. Indonesia not wanting to issue a walk here to load the bases, Roy. No, and at just 60 mile an hour, there's not a lot of margin for error. And he will not want bases loaded and Liam Hay step into the plate. But that is what happens. Shane takes that walk. Of course, as we've mentioned, these boys, real team players, yes, they want to hit. Yes, they want to be able to smash that ball and showcase their power. But happy with the walk, happy to load the bases. This is going to be a big at-bat for Liam Hay. We saw a massive drive out to uh, centre left early in the game. We saw a beautiful uh, thread the needle between uh, second and short. It's driving runs at his last at-bat. This is a big bases loaded situation. And there we go. Oh, pitcher, and he's missing that third. That's going to bring in the third base runner. Second base runner comes around. Hugo Harvey, he's going to be in. That's a massive throw from shortstop who uh, spikes it into the ground. Oh, sorry, that was the left fielder who spiked it in the ground, missed the cutoff. Catcher doing fantastic work of catching it. That puts uh, Shane Scanlon on second. And of course, uh, Liam Hay, who hit that on first base. By the batter there. And great for New Zealand score. Two more runs, two insurance runs now sitting. 9-6 uh, to Just, uh, New Zealand. Real unfortunate that we had a few camera problems there. Um, not sure what's it's caused a that, Samuel. on the big TJ. 59 miles an hour, so still working that high 50s, low 60s window. TJ seeing it, felt he should have swing, sort of shook his head at it and sort of went, damn, should have got it. Should have, would have, could have, Samuel. Should have, would have, could have. Scanlon with the short lead out on second. TJ leaving that. Ooh. It's an inside pitch. Indonesia not too sure about that. I'm seeing a few disgruntled faces there. So yes, we just had a little uh, technical issue with our cameras. Missed that drive by Liam that brought in those two runs. TJ connects. That's up and high. That's going to be out of the park behind us. It is ending up on the rugby field. Like he and no rugby being played today. 61 mile an hour from this pitcher. Like I said earlier, there is not a lot of margin for error. One ball, two strikes on the big unit that is TJ. TJ swinging at that one. That's another high one. And that is behind us again. Just fouling these off. Protecting the zone. 62 miles on that. A little bit of extra speed from the pitcher there. Oh, and Amosa sits down looking. Instant grimace in the face, knowing that he missed the pitch. Thought it was coming on the inside and just didn't come in enough. 61 mile fastball from the pitcher there. Great pitch from the Indonesian pitcher to sit a real threat down on the bench. We have Messiah in the at bat, and that's, that's the strength of this lineup, isn't it, Roy? We go from TJ to Messiah uh, to King. It's, you sit down one power hitter, you just got another one behind him. There's a lot of power in this lineup. You look from the very top of this lineup. Samuel, when you when your leadoff batter is Shane Scanlon, yep. certainly uh, certainly not a small man, and you follow that up with one of the best bats going and Liam Hay, and then the power starts to roll with 
TJ Messiah Tangara. Messiah connects that. That is up. That is into centre left. Centre fielder coming in on that. He's caught it. Messiah is out and holds the runners back. Liam Hay having to retreat back to first. Of course, Messiah taking a hit by pitch at his last at bat. And now, fly ball out to centre field. That seemed like a regulation fly ball, but with this win, Samuel, that's actually really well done by that centre fielder. Yep, you could see he had to change his line as, it, as that ball peaked out. Lined up under it, and it just with that small shift to the right, with that southerly coming in, Tongaroa King at bat. Wanting to drive these runs in. New Zealand wanting these insurance runs. That is up high. 59 miles. We're closing in on 12.30 local time. Two and a half hours into this game. That's normally a regulation game for these players. So it's going to be interesting to see whether or not we see any fatigue from either of these teams. If, if we do see that, we could see one team run away with this, Samuel. Absolutely. Indonesia going through a lot of their players, a lot of their pitches uh, right now. And we are only on the bottom of the third, so... Let's hope they've got pitching to get through to the end of the game. That was a 61 mile strike from the pitcher. And that's where he's got to live, right on that outside corner. At that speed, you cannot be in the middle of the plate. It will get punished. Absolutely, and TK just leaving it. TK with a swing on that one for a 61 mile. Slightly high ball in the zone. Tangaroa, not TK, Samuel. Tangaroa King. Uh, TK is Nico Waru. Oh. Come on, okay. stick with the kids' nicknames. Tangaroa King. That one down and inside. It's 63 miles from the pitcher here. Kunama. Tangaroa King, one of the dual sport players in this team. He plays for the Waitakere Bears Club, plays Premier League softball as well as baseball we're hoping that another trip to the world series and this young man will commit massive to hit here roy sorry to interrupt but feeding it straight down the second base out into that right fielder he's there that scores scanlon though liam hay onto second base and tongaroa king another insurance run for new zealand bringing up the 10th run of the game now sitting at 10-6 so pouring back the two runs that indonesia got at the top of this inning Roy, that's really important insurance runs again absolutely they'll be uh they'll be pumped about this because this game did not start well for them and they've shown some fight that the coaches were calling for i heard rumors of a, a late night team meeting the coach has laid it on the line about what the expectations were and the team has come out and delivered, Samuel. Oh, you love to hear it, of course. Uh, all these teams. Oh, another big hit from McKinley straight to uh, shortstop. Shortstop plays one. That is going to be out. Call from uh, KG. That is three out, sitting down. Uh, good piece from McKinley. Just couldn't beat the shortstop there. Um, but as I was saying, all these teams staying at the YMCA in town. And uh, one of, I, I, to me, one of the highlights when you travel, getting to, yep, you, you're playing these guys, you want to beat these guys, you, you want to win the competition, but when you get back to that hotel, mate, you're just making lifelong friends from all around the world. And uh, you love to see it, don't you, Roy? Absolutely. And of course, all of them eating over at the uh, Pickering Rugby Club, where we have a bunch of volunteers. I know you've done a, a thanks to the volunteers many times, Samuel, but we can do it one more time. The, the crew over there feeding these players, that's no small feat. No, no, absolutely massive. And from what I understand, we've got a crew over there this afternoon preparing a traditional hangi that the team will be having for dinner tomorrow night. That'll be a highlight for these foreign teams. Oh, absolutely love a good hangi. With a bit of pork and kumara, sweet potato or yams, depending where you are in the world. Definitely a favourite of mine. We've got a new pitcher out here, Hugo Harvey, coming to the mound for New Zealand. 
New Zealand looking just to keep control of the game now as we move into the fourth inning. Hugo's a real gamer, and one thing I know about Hugo, he'll throw strikes. So he's not going to blow it past people, but he'll throw strikes, he'll get the ball in play, and he'll be relying on this New Zealand team to make the plays behind him. And if that can happen, Samuel, it's going to be a tough, tough ask for Indonesia to come back. Yeah, absolutely, Roy, absolutely. And as you mentioned, it's uh, two and a half hours for these guys. That's the regulation game here in New Zealand. We normally call time. No time limits for these games uh, in the Asia Pacific and Middle East Qualifier Little League Junior Series. So these guys have to really dig deep down uh, for the New Zealand team. They're going to be playing a long game. Of course, their first game against Korea, four hour and 15 minute slugfest. So already had a bite of a longer game and we'll see how they rally around this game today I think Indonesia will be determined here they they can't go down without a fight in this innings no, absolutely the batter takes the plate leaving it ball on the outside Harvey just trying to find a zone thought that was going to be a strike but uh, just trying to find a zone on that first pitch Beautiful strike down the middle, 60 miles an hour. So as we mentioned, not the fastest pitcher that New Zealand has, but great control on the ball. There we go, that's going to be a pop-up. That is out of play, that is going to be behind us. Well, foul. anything that, that pops up today, Samuel, it's likely to be blown out of play. Absolutely, that's southerly really starting to pick up. Uh, in this afternoon sun. It is a beautiful autumn day here in New Zealand. Of course, as I've mentioned before, if you're in Auckland, I do encourage you to come down to the park. There's another foul, but it should be playable. Unfortunately, no one making the run there. 52 mile breaking ball there from uh, Hugo Harvey on the mound. William Hay might have been looking to hold on to that ball, the old hidden ball trick. <laughs> He's a wily character, that boy. Indonesia really swinging these bats. There we go, that's in play. That's down to third, down to Nika. Nika on to first, and that's going to be out. Number 10, Dharma, out on one. One down. Great, great start to this innings. That's what they needed. Good work from the, the uh, Indonesian batter, making contact. Putting the ball in play, you never know what can happen. Yeah, just a slight bobble or a slight misfield and he would have been safe. That's what Indone uh, Indonesia will be looking for. Just getting players on the base so that they've got runners in three. Got number 55, Panama, up at the bat. So some of the defensive changes for New Zealand. You'll see Liam Hay now over at first base. He's known for having a, a really strong glove over there. At ball. 60 miles an hour, low and outside. And to push the uh, three big boys into the outfield, we've got Tangaroa King, TJ Mosa and Messiah all filling out the outfield. And of course, Ben Bon Giovanni coming into second base with Hugo going onto the mound. Nice, so another low and away pitch, but it's foul off by the, uh, by the batter. Batter leaving that, bit of a wild pitch there. Again, 59 miles an hour, so Harvey really working that uh, high 50s window. Two balls, one strike, on the batter. Hugo. Another foul ball there. Foul and out. Out of play. So again, no. just with those foul balls, as we've already seen today, just uh, umpire Paul struggling to to keep enough on, on supply. It's just getting a reminder of the count there with uh, all of these little disruptions. Umpire doesn't want to make any mistakes. Two balls, two strikes. Yeah. 
Hugo is just throwing it a little high. 58 miles. That wind really starting to kick this gazebo around now. Away. That's going to be affecting the pitches. So a lot of the earlier pitches we saw there. The appearance, nervously watching on. Ground ball here to third. Back to Nico. Nico throws it down. That is going to be out. Umpire Katie calls it out as the Indonesian Panama lays it out head first, dive into first. So a little bit of a change here for Hugo. It's actually his uh, younger brother Timmy that's nervously watching on. Timmy, Timmy Harvey, also known. And his uh, little Timmy, league team is Timmy Trout. Timmy Trout. Uh, I've had the privilege of coaching him the last two years in that Majors team and just didn't want to play outfield. I felt that was his best position and yes. so I put him out there. Hugo pours in another strike. And uh, absolutely now owns the centre fielder in that Majors. Won't give that spot up to anyone. Ultimately deserves it. Earning the name Timmy Trout. Another foul ball away. Hugo just keeping on throwing strikes. It is hard to come back against a pitcher who's throwing strikes. It is. You're really having to defend your zone now. Making these uh, batters swing. There we go. That's a big hit. Out into right field. Masai. Is that Masai right there? It is Masai. He's missed it. It's gone further, it's gone down, right down to the fence now, 318 feet. That's gonna round the uh, batter down onto a stand-up triple who's being held at three as the ball is thrown in. Uh, into, who is number 23 there? Is that McKinley out there fielding that ball and holding the runner at third? And Paul looking for balls again. Here we go, nice supply of three balls now that he can hold in his supply. Uh, unlucky fielding there, that was a, just a great late swing on that pitch there, Roy. It was a great bit of hitting to right field. I think the wind possibly affecting things. Helping the angle that Messiah took to the ball may be affected by the wind, and as a result, the ball got past him, and that led to the stand-up triple. That is a strike in there, 60 miles an hour, up the upper end of the limit of uh, Hugo Harvey. Great work putting it in the zone, now with that runner in scoring position on third. Great block there from Scanlon as Hugo puts that in the dirt. We're sitting on one and one. Oh. 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 Feeling that breeze at the moment. Yeah, wind really picking up now, Samuel. Oh, there's another hit, and Masai is under it. No, he lets it as he's oh. dropped it. That's going to put the runner on first. That's a missed throw on first. Scanlon's. There, the runner advances to second. Second baseman out there just saying, hold the ball, hold the ball in the infield. That scores number 77 in for the run. So in that's Indonesia. A, this is what I've seen a game. bit from this New Zealand team, Samuel. So you notice there, Messiah, he thought he had to play at one, so he looked to see where the runner was, took his eye off the ball, bobbled it, and then compounded that mistake by throwing the ball away. And it's little mistakes like that that will let Indonesia back in this game. Absolutely. So the score 10-7 now. 10-7 now. We've got a runner in scoring position on second. 27 at bat. Hugo just possibly just struggling with that wind a little bit. Delivering balls. We know he's had great control so far. We are two out, so just need one more to retire this Indonesia side. Indonesia trying to rally. Beautiful strike in the zone, down the middle. 58 miles an hour. Well, I think just Hugo, slowing down, getting that control. Hugo will be disappointed. That last fly ball, if it wasn't for this wind, would have been a routine out to right field. It was a wind that knocked it down. One's out. Play on his second, high ball 
allows the runner. Now, if that throw was in, well, I think he would have had him. But slightly high delivery on that throw down from Scanlon. There. Certainly would have been close, but the, the high throw gave us a, an opportunity to see the athleticism of Ben Bongiovanni flying high to take that. Absolutely fantastic effort there. Hugo back on the mount. That's, that's the second time that that uh, batter has watched that come in. 59 miles again, just on slightly on the outside. It's a great location from Hugo Harvey. Oh, that one in the dirt blocks it. Ball four. Puts a runner on first. The tying run coming to the plate. It is two outs. Shane just reminding his team there. Guys, two outs. We just need to play one. Okay, we saw a nice hit from him this morning. And another walk. Let's see what he delivers at this set back. Beautiful strike. 56 miles. Slightly on the slower side. A great location there, Roy. Absolutely. Hugo knows. Put it in the zone. Let them put the bat on the ball. Let his field do the work. He's already seen TK make nice two plays for him at third. Just a ball on that last one on the outside. Oh, a little foul off from uh, Tako, who came at it a bit fast. 59 miles from Hugo Harvey there, and the uh, batter beating it, just tipping it foul. New Zealand pitching coach, Connor Perry, looking on a little nervously here. Wants to yes. see his team get out of this one. Can't visit the pitcher. Oh, what a pitch. What just, a pitch. Just on the outside, was hoping to fish. Hoping to get this better swinging, but this better has been a little bit frozen in the box. 2-2 two, two count. Oh, it was actually great work from him. It started over the plate and went wide. Oh, good piece there. Fouls it left, right just behind this uh, pitcher. We've got a ball on the field here, but umpire pool deciding to play on. There we go, that's in field, that's a comeback to the uh, to the pitcher. The pitcher's dropped it, but able to recover and retire him at one for a 1-3 play. Retiring Indonesia, but not before they could score a run and close that gap a little bit more. Really feeling it now, Roy? Well, the wonder's starting to get to me a little bit, Samuel, but... So, of course, sitting on 10-7 here for New Zealand as we move into the bottom of the fourth. Hey, no candy. No candies on the diamond, bro. It is, it is 12, uh, 20 to 1 here, so slowly approaching that three-hour mark. Coach Paul, I'm oh sorry, uh, umpire Paul, doing a great job behind the plate here. Fun fact about Paul, I remember when he was a green shirt, which is the program that we have in New Zealand. So green shirt, blue shirt, and then black shirt. And uh, I remember his very first season was his boy started playing, and I convinced him to get into umpiring. He uh, umpired the next game and never looked back. And uh, credit to him, he's moved through the ranks and now is a black, black shirt, umpiring international baseball. So what you're saying here Samuel is not only do you take credit for a lot of these players, but you're going to take credit for an umpire as well. Well after he saw my, uh, my performance behind the plate, Bayside versus uh, West City Baseball, and he said man that looked like a lot of fun, I said it is. Get, in, get involved, and he did. 
great work, Samuel. Your infectious enthusiasm has uh, given us one of our great umpires here. Oh, I just love baseball, all aspects of it. Of course, a big thank you to our umpires and our scorers. Often a thankless task in, in baseball, but uh, we want to thank them right here, right now. Without them, this, these tournaments, these games would not be possible. Never got my head around uh, scoring, though, eh? That is a tough job. And you live out west. West takes, is the best. Takes a lot of focus. Without those scores, we wouldn't have stats. Without stats, it wouldn't be the same game. We do love the stats in baseball. Without stats, we don't have baseball. Here we go. First pitch. Big swing from Ben Bongiovanni on a low ball, 58 miles, swinging over top of it. We've got number 55, Panama, back on the mound for Indonesia. Indonesia really working the pitching staff today. We've seen a lot of rotation. Ben's first at bat of the game. That is a high ball, good lead from him. So on one ball, one strike. 59 mile an hour there. A lot of these pitchers working in the same sort of range. Indonesia really needing a damage free inning here. Great, great uh, effort from the catcher there, catching a, a very high and high and inside. So inside it was actually over the New Zealand players. Helmet. Two balls. One strike. We see the Guam team in the outfield just arriving for their game against Korea this afternoon, two o'clock. As I've mentioned, if you're if you're in the Auckland uh, region, make sure you get down to Flatfield, get down to uh, Lord Ellsmore Park, Cascades Road, home of the uh, HP Hawkies. This Guam team might be a little bit surprised to be turning up. Two hours and 45 minutes after the start of this game to find that we're still just in the fourth inning. We have a 2-2 count. Ben working this pitcher. Ben striking through as the drop ball from the third. He's going to be safe. Oh, he's out! Called out from Coach KG there. The catcher did an amazing job. Had to get around umpire Paul there. Even with the umpire uh, interference, managed to recover the ball, throw it up to first, and get a massive out on Ben Bongiovanni. Great play there, Roy. Absolutely. I think the catcher just gave you a little bit of a look there, Samuel, to say that ain't amazing. That's just what I do, pal. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we do. As you said, catchers are built different. Did you teach Paul that one? <laughs> block. <laughs> Not me, mate. <laughs> Here we go, just on the outside and low. Of course, Nico, back at plate. Wanting to start something here for New Zealand. As my co-host Roy just steps out of the box to try and soak up some of those uh, sun's rays. I can't uh, state enough how uh, chilly it is here and maybe Indonesia feeling it. They won't be used to this cold. They won't be used to this wind. Big swing from Nikawaru, but over the top of the ball on a 61, 61 mile fast, fast ball. Down the centre, great pitch delivery from the Indonesian pitcher. Says something about these conditions that the entire commentary box here is actually being tied down in case it blows away. 
just on the inside, the catcher thought it was in the zone, looks over to the dugout, says hey there's nothing more I could do there. Indonesia just uh, trying to find that zone again, having a little bit, just being a little bit unlucky with it all. Just trying to really pitch that inside and really choke up the batter. Kecho though, just sitting on it. Kecho, I think, uh, Kecho was wondering exactly where that zone was. He was uh, gave an interesting look over to his coach to say, I'm not sure where that one missed. Absolutely. And that puts Nico on the uh, on the bag. Because the pitcher issues a walk. And we've got Hugo Harvey coming into bat. Just asking the umpire for a bit of time as they get their orders from the coach. So one down here with Hugo at the at the plate. This is a critical out for Indonesia. Pitcher will really bear down here. Oh, that is up high. Of course, a big change in that strike zone coming from uh, Nico down into Harvey. Harvey, uh, not the tallest person on the team. Indonesia just still trying to find that zone. This catch is... Uh, Really trying to earn his worth here, uh, trying to find that zone for for his pitcher. Looking for advice from the from his coach. Runner goes. Big throw down. Oh, and he kicks it away. Looks like Nico's taking the maybe a bit of a hard slide in. Decides not to get up on that overthrow. Just taking this time to uh, time together. TK had that steal all the way. Yeah. <laughs> Throw was never going to get him. And this is not a good situation. As with just one out, we have runners first and second, and we're back round to the top of the order. And as we've commented on a few times, the top of this order comes with plenty of power. Has been punishing. We might see the uh, another pitching change here as the uh, coach comes out. We're well, not sure of the actual stats, but we can't have too many pitches left in this Indonesian team. We have definitely seen him work his staff. Well, I guess without even knowing the result of the Korea Guam game, in many respects, this game doesn't actually mean much, Samuel. Both teams will go on to the semi finals. And you, you can't play this strategically. You can't say we need to win to get what you perceive as the easier semi-final or you can't you can't throw this game to try to get what you perceive as the easier semi-final you want to save your pitches and you want to be ready for a semi-final and you're hoping a final on Tuesday win that and you're off to the big dance Samuel absolutely it's going to be uh Samuel just sorry, just checking out the stats here. He's trying to work out how many pitches uh, Indonesia have gone through, and uh, he ran out of fingers, I think. So <laughs> yeah, definitely working that pitching. And, and like you say, uh, these games, this game may or may not matter um, because you, you're still going to go into the semi-finals. You're still going to be facing either Korea or Guam, and either way, you're going to have to turn up to that semi-final and you want to be able to turn up with all your pitches ready to go Roy. Um, you're going to want 
the full use of your staff as we see sometimes pitches it's just not their day and they need to come out straight away and uh, try and recover as quick as we can so it does look like this is the sixth pitcher so far for Indonesia and uh, of course we're also on to the fourth pitcher for New Zealand and both both coaches making sure that all pitches are available either for Monday games or Tuesday games. Micah Hargrave, the only one to go over the the 30 pitch limit. He's thrown 49 pitches in this game. Everybody yeah, else so will need a day's rest, but available for that last day, Roy. Absolutely. So available for the final. That's an indication that they see him as an option for for the final, whether that be a, a starting option or out of the bullpen. Shane Scanlon, top of the order here, batting uh, 280 for the top of uh, for the tournament. Is there one strikeout today? Come set. Ooh, that's a nice slow curve right on 50 miles an hour. Shane, uh, just looking at that, not sure what to uh, what to see. There haven't been many of these Indonesian pitchers that have had the luxury of coming on with bases clear. And once again, new pitcher comes on, two runners on base. Oh, big hit from the big man himself. Oh, great field from the right fielder who uh, moves over. And of course, with that wind pushing it right, I think overran it, able to extend his glove and catch Shane. A good piece from Shane, unlucky, but great fielding from the Indonesian team there. And of course, runners having to run back to second and first. That brings up Liam Hay, batting 400 for the tournament. We've seen his power on display here today. He loves that there's runners in scoring position and will be looking to drive up his RBI stat. Absolutely, he's already driven in runs in this game. Oh, big hit, but that is foul behind over the left field there. Massive uh, contact, coming straight out, straight out, first pitch straight away. So with two out, this does give an advantage of the runners being in motion. So any hit they will be running, and with what we've already seen from Liam, that could lead to a couple more runs here for New Zealand if he can make contact. Indonesia will be determined to stop him. Absolutely. So Liam Hay, great piece there. That's going to drive in a run. Oh, center field is there. That was deep. That was deep, Samuel. Centerfield are doing a good job. The wind blowing it back, knocking it down. That could have been massive if, this, have been if massive. this wind wasn't blowing in. Just held up in that wind. The centerfielder, not much moving, movement at all. Sat under it and was able to score. Of course, he had credited with three RBIs so far today. And was looking for another two there. Unfortunately, just didn't quite make it. Indonesia will be happy with that, uh, that in near Roy, uh, damage free. New Zealand not able to add on any insurance runs. Still sitting at 10-7 in New Zealand's favour. New Zealand now, or Indonesia now, having to uh, get some more runs. Thank you sir, our production manager. Big shout out to TP. Watching, uh, watching the game to our left here, giving me stats, giving me speeds. Absolutely fantastic, of course. Might have been damage free, Samuel, but your excitement at that hit probably gave you everybody an indication of just how hard hit it was off the bat. Unfortunately, into the teeth of this howling wind. Yes, this wind is bitter. And I tell you what, those players will be feeling it. You can see their jerseys fluttering in it. You can see the trees in the background really starting to move. So this is going to make for an interesting game against Guam and Korea. That's meant to be kicking off at 2 o'clock. There may be a slight delay there as they reset the field after this game. 
um, but that's really going to push around. We know the uh, Korean manager has talked about how hard the wind is. They're not used to it at all, are they, Roy? Absolutely, and uh, Guam also struggling with the cold. Guam, well, yeah. Tropical island. <laughs> they thought they were staying in the Pacifics until they got here and saw a single digit Celsius on the thermometer last night. Not, not something that they often get in, in Guam. Yes, overnight temperatures uh, at this time of year getting quite low here in New Zealand. Right, so we have Trisnati coming in. Keenan Trisnati, the brothers on this team. That's a strike every day of the week. Of course, Trisnati hitting a 250 so far in this tournament. Two at bats today and one hit. He's credited with two RBIs as well. Big swing from him today. I'm really liking the approach here of this Indonesian team. You notice a slightly slower pitcher and they're really stepping forward in the batter's box. They're a thinking team, Samuel. Well, they are. You know the joys of... Uh, Playing baseball chess, that's a great hit. Down onto first base there, Liam Hay. Was it backed up by Hugo Harvey? Hugo Harvey gets the ball, takes the base, and the runner is out on first. Very nice to see good fundamentals there from the New Zealand team. Of course, in yesterday's game, we saw a situation where that didn't happen. The pitcher covering first. This time, because Hugo was aware, it meant that that bobble of Liam, no damage done. Yeah, absolutely. Great backup. We love to see it. We love to see it. Of course, we move on to Athea. Coming in, betting 200, but uh, hasn't had the opportunity to swing today. That is a strike, though. Another strike. Big hit here. Out into the centre field. Centre field is looking at an easy grab. Uh, from TJ out there, Mr. Amosa, great for two down, Indonesia, just struggling on the sun end, they're getting back to ball, but just not finding the ground here, Roy, they'll be wanting to, to uh, um, put on some runs in the sun and just to close that gap, that 10-7 gap. Well, as we talked about, Samuel, this is the advantage of having Hugo on the mound. He'll put the ball there and... It'll give the fielders an opportunity as we see that one pulled foul. It'll give the fielders opportunity and TJ looked safe as could be under that fly ball. First pitch swing from Sonderton. Once again right at the front of the batter's box. Batting 140 for the tournament. Really looking for a piece to drive out here. Meeting these balls early. Let's hope right field is awake, ready to receive this ball. Even though he's at the front of the box, he's still early on that. Oh, strikeout swinging. High heater from oh, Hugo, and look and at that. Massive energy from the New Zealand team, getting down, keeping their insurance runs out on the top of the fifth, so we are 10-7 still. No score change from uh, either New Zealand in the last inning or Indonesia at the top of this inning. New Zealand with the opportunity. New Zealand with the opportunity to put on some insurance runs here. I must say, Samuel, I'm not disappointed to see a quick innings here. This game uh, has taken some time. Absolutely, as we cross over into the three-hour mark for this game, it, it is getting long. Well. Going to the bottom of the fifth. So still potentially two innings to go after this. Of course, it's no guarantee that it goes that far. As we have explained during this tournament, there is a mercy rule in play in Little League Baseball. So a lead of 15 runs after four innings or 10 runs after five or more innings, and that would be game. So New Zealand having to score seven runs in this inning. 
to draw that mercy. It's a uh, it's a big ask, but you never know. Umpire Paul Vodonovic just looking to hustle things along here. The Indonesian team taking their time between innings, and it is an umpire's prerogative to try to speed that team up. Try to keep it moving. Absolutely. So typically between innings, a pitcher has five pitches to warm up and the umpire at their discretion, if they feel that there's time wasting going on, they can actually reduce the number of pitches. Of course, when a new pitcher comes onto the mound, it's eight pitches that he has to warm up and, and that's where these games tend to drag along a little is when there's a lot of pitching changes. That's eight pitches every time to warm up on top of the changes getting made so can really slow things up right so it is batter up for TJ Mosa coming up 375 or 370 for the tournament he'll be looking to add to that three at bats today two hits two runs and an RBI credit to TJ today He'll be, adding, he'll be looking to add on to this. He'll be looking to get onto base early to put New Zealand in a controlling position. Just hear some uh, words of advice from New Zealand's leading divisional umpire, Gabe. Big hit from TJ. That's up through the middle there. Great play from shortstop. He overthrows it at first though. TJ not looking. He's going to just, he's happy with the stay at first. That was a nice hit up the middle. The shortstop doing a great job, but it was always going to be tough. Stretching it out. TJ has got speed and making the play, but unable to make the throw. I think even if that throw had been on target, TJ was going to beat it out. Now Messiah to the plate, hitting 420 for the tournament. Two at bats, one hit, one RBI today. Runner at first with TJ there. Messiah, be looking to march him around. Big hit from Messiah out into centre field. Under centre field's under it, but he's struggling with it. That's oh, he lays it out on the line. Great catch there <laughs> from the centre fielder. This win not making that easy, Roy. Unbelievable. The centre fielder makes a diving catch at the feet of the right fielder. That is that is a play right there. He tracked it the whole way. He had the speed. The right fielder never called him off. Centre fielder, of course, captain of the outfield. He knew he had it. Messiah, I think, quite surprised that that one uh, came in. But that brings Tongarola King to the plate. Betting 500 for the tournament. Uh, of course, uh, two at-bats today and one hit. Two RBIs will credit to King. So another power hitter here. If he catches up to this pitcher. Ooh, this is a book. Carlo's calling time. The batter wasn't in the box. He was actually looking at the coach. I think KJ is going to try and reverse this because umpire Paul wasn't ready either. Waved off. Waved off. As I thought, no one was quite ready for that. The pitcher was ready. Then saw that the uh, batter and the umpire was looking at the coach. So Indonesia, good challenge there. Not really a challenge, but good call from uh, umpire Keiji, who saw what was going on and why the uh, pitcher disengaged. That's up high, big throw down to second. Oh, and they've overthrown it, they've overcooked it. That's gonna send TJ around to third, big throw to third here. Third baseman gets it, but TJ is in. Wow, and hindsight says that uh, Indonesia might have preferred the book there, Samuel. <laughs> as TJ steals oh, second and takes third on the overthrow. It is a tough one, Roy. Hindsight can be a wonderful thing, isn't it? But you're quite right. Time had been called, so there can't be a balk when when time has been called. So Carlo was focused on the pitcher, but KG aware as always. 
to be fair, Carlo called the ball, then called time straight away as I think he caught up with the uh, what was happening as well. So great work from the umpire crew. There's a big hit down that oh, first baseline. He's going to get the out, but he is going to drive in TJ. Uh, TJ and Musa putting the run up, getting New Zealand an assurance run 11 7 for New Zealand. TJ, uh, sorry, uh, Tongarawa King getting that out. And that is going to be, uh, it's two outs, isn't it now, Roy? It is. That was a uh, fantastic adjustment from the first baseman. That ball was scorched by Tangaroa. Now we come through our contact hitters of McKinley. He's going to be looking to come up and add, hitting 250 for the tournament. Yes, of contact there into that centre fielder. That centre fielder just cannot do any wrong today. His glove is golden today, taking multiple catches. Great hit from McKinley. First pitch swing, driving it out there, and that wind again just not helping the New Zealand hitters with it holding up. And that centre fielder able to read that ball, Roy. Absolutely, he's uh, looking very, very solid out there. So that retires the New Zealand side, bottom of the fifth and brings up top of the sixth, two innings to go. The crunchy point of the game, or the pointy end of the stick as you'd say. Indonesia really needing to add some runs here. Of course two innings to go, so it's not the end of the game, but you will be, they will be hoping that they're able to add some runs here. Close this gap, 11-7. And I think New Zealand's just going to roll with Hugo here. I think he, they're, they're going to be prepared to pitch him out. He won't be seen as a pitching option really for a semi-final or final. So he'll just keep them going after that last innings and ended with that beautiful high cheese strikeout. But uh, Breeze just picking up again. Shivering a little there, Samuel. I don't know about shivering, but uh, no, it's, it's pretty cold. All right, so two innings pitched by uh, Hugo Harvey so far. He's had two hits on him, one one run, so ER of one. He's had one baseball ball and one strikeout. ERA of three on Harvey Hugo as we get started on this Indonesian lineup. Great strike at 58 miles from Hugo Harvey to open the game, or open the inning, sorry. We are looking at Dharma, number 10. Actually hitting zero for the tournament. There he goes, out, grounder, out to shortstop, shortstop to first, easy out. It is a 6-3 play to see Dharma back on the bench. And you see an example there of that, that change to get the gold glove Liam Hay into first base. Making it look easy on the scoop. Corbin McKinley just leaving the throw a little short. Knowing that he's got a safe glove over there that will help him out. Alright, so my lineup doesn't actually have this better batting. He is a new batter. We haven't seen him today. My Lindra, number 21. He is not up here for stats, so obviously a change done between innings. Great throw from Hugo. 57, just on the inside. Better didn't like it. And by didn't like it. Ball. Here's this big strike from Hugo. Hugo sets. Oh, comes in low and away. 55 miles, so a bit of a slower ball from Hugo. Loving his little change ups with the uh, speeds. Not a big difference, Roy, but uh, you know, going at 60 and then coming in in, in the uh, mid 50s. That is ball four issues. A walk, Hugo. A bit annoyed at himself, but uh, still smiling, still smiling. 
Yeah, Hugo was pumped at the end of that last innings and he just got to control himself here after making a nice start to this innings. Now a walk, which is not like him. He'll look to just get a ground ball here and look, look to have his infield turn two for him. So we've got Willa, uh, Willa Winko here, number 77, batting 3.30 for the tournament. He's uh, one at bat, one hit, but two runs today. After getting a base by ball earlier. I wouldn't be surprised to see Indonesia put this runner in motion. They've seen a lot of ground balls from Hugo's pitching and they would not want to see a double play. So you put that runner in motion, you try to steal second and take the double play yeah. out of play. I would agree. 54 on that last pitch there from Hugo. Oh, Hugo coming in high. Just struggling a little bit with his control at the moment. Needs to get back to just throwing simple strikes. We have time from the Indonesian coach here. He was talking to third base umpire Keith Wilson, a local legend of the game, umpiring a long, illustrious umpire career, Keith Wilson. And we are back on two balls. I think he might have been talking about a bit of a quick pitch from Hugo on that last one. He's taking the strike on that. Of course, the pitcher has to come set. And a quick pitch is done for a couple of reasons, but in this case it'll be to try to catch that runner taking off. Quick pitch will give Shane a better chance to throw him out at second. Ooh, that is a pop-up and that's going to be going foul behind us. And we have the Korean team behind us now warming up, training, getting ready for their game this afternoon, 2 o'clock down at Phillip Field. Hugo coming in at 54 again, just really lobbing these slow balls in, boy. Yeah, well, as, as we've said, he just looks for contact. And contact here could be a twin killing. Hugo steps off, resets, get his orders from catcher Shane. There's a big hit. That is up under left field and into the glove safe. That sends first the uh, runner back to first. Un Beautiful play from a New Zealand left fielder there. Unlucky for the batter, who got a piece of it. Yeah, Tangaroa King looking very safe out in left field. He's seen enough plays with this wind that, that he's aware of where it's going to be blowing. He parked himself under it. Easy catch. Now we're at number 31, Trisundi. Kenzie Trisundi, batting 400 for the tournament. Monumental effort. Three at-bats today. With two hits and two RBIs accredited in today's game. It's a stat line that he can be happy with. He'll be looking to add to it though as Indonesia look to remain in this game. There we go. That's a little popper. Moving Ben around. Great movement from the second baseman there, Ben Bon Giovanni, coming in with a solid glove and catching him. Of course, that ball being pushed by that wind again. But no flies on Ben as he really runs to the right side of that of that diamond. Great innings from New Zealand. They'll be stoked with that. No damage uh, taken from the Indonesian team. Indonesia will be feeling okay. They're still in this. They've only got one inning to do. Now, we did see this on day one, Roy. We saw New Zealand, who led the whole way, lose the game in the final inning heartbreak. Indonesia will be hoping history repeats itself. Samuel, have you not noticed I'm wearing my New Zealand cap today? I'd rather you don't mention that game from day one. <laughs> it is unlucky, but... Uh... <laughs> it's it's pretty... It's bringing back some terrible memories for me, and, and I don't see that happening today. You don't see that happening today, well, and that is fair enough. Yeah. Roy wearing his New Zealand hat. Me, myself, opting for a non-biased Little League hat. Of course, uh, Little League t-shirts available at the uh, shop today, so if you're wanting a little bit of a memorabilia about this, with this uh, tournament make sure you head there support the program of course we are running this program on an oily rag with uh, no financial support at any level of the game <laughs> Just, 
uh, a bit of a meeting of the minds to the left of us here, Samuel, with uh, Coach Eaton Laird coming and getting some advice from the master TP. It'll be interesting. I'd expect some runs in this innings with TP giving a bit of advice. T typically the way it works. New Zealand really wanting to put just a couple more insurance runs on the board. As we are... Uh, Probably a good opportunity with two of the uh, top Central City coaches meeting up there. Just give you a little reminder that this stream is brought to you by Central City Baseball Club. Our thanks to them for producing uh, the equipment that we're using for this. Trying to give you a, um, a high quality production on a extremely low budget. Lower than a shoestring budget. <laughs> <laughs> I did get coffee today though, so we're moving up in the world. You were right. quite excited by that coffee too, Samuel. It was great coffee. Alright, so we do have number 21, a new pitcher here. Um, Baga Sukaro coming in for Indonesia here. Catcher just saying, hey, that's not your pitch. Come on, let's do better. We have... Uh, ben Giovanni up to bat. Ben will be feeling good after making a play to finish that last inning. So often you make a play in the field and then you step up to bat and that's when you come up with a hit. Bon bed, bon Giovanni, sorry. Uh, ben Bon Giovanni hitting zero for the tournament. We'll be looking to put some stats on the board today. That one in the dirt. 54 mile an hour and to be honest he has not been close to the strike zone so far with his first three pitches and Ben I think will be taking all the way. Yeah absolutely Ben. Very patient uh, in the box. He's not going to be lo looking to swing here. It's just if he gets the opportunity he will. And there he is, taking the walk, and to be honest, Ben is like the opposite of uh, the team that he supports. Obviously a Yankees supporter, and they're all about swinging hard, stri stri Sorry. striking out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you're, you're right there, Samuel? <laughs> Sorry. I thought someone said Yankees. <laughs> Sorry. We're back. Okay, come on now. Come on now, Samuel. We can show our appreciation for the uh, all-time... <laughs> All-time World Series leading Yankees. Oh, he can. As Ben uh, takes off. Waru at pitch here. Another ben missed Watt. throwdown from, uh, on a stealing approach from Ben. That's going to let him get right around to third. Uh, just on a missed throwdown at second there, Roy. Uh, Indonesia will be really upset about that. They're just giving it away at the moment. Well, that's two times in a row now that on a steal to second, the New Zealand player is finished up on third thanks to overthrows. Absolutely. Now we haven't seen uh, Nico Waru's bat come alive but uh, Roy what do you know of his uh, batting? He's, he's capable, he's a capable hitter. He's bats for contact if I'm right. Well, I believe he was the MVP of the Junior League team in Korea last year and that was on the back of the big bat that he was swinging. Oh, and there we go. Just talking about his bat. That is being pushed right. Right fielder under it. Great field. Ben with the tag up. Looking for the insurance run. Done. Standing up still. That is 12 7 to New Zealand as he gets a sacrifice fly. Batting in an insurance run. Great running from Ben. Great sacrifice from Nico. Wow. He can be happy about that. And that's exactly what I'm talking about. Nico just does baseball the right way, understands the situation. And I guess we're going to have to give a little bit of credit to the master coach TP. Gave a little bit of advice at the start of this innings, and we've seen the result. Harvey at bat. 56 mile an hour there. He'll be looking to get on base here. Sure, New Zealand would like a couple of more, more insurance runs as, as we move into the final inning. Well, 
Now, one of the things about Hugo is he doesn't care how he does it. He's a gamer. He's more than happy to take a walk, and if he does, he can cause havoc on the bases. I've got to sit down out of that wind. <laughs> Samuel Eva's starting to struggle with this uh, chilly Ooh, work here as Hugo gets brushed back on that one. Hugo, get in out of the way. Probably would have told him just to take it. <laughs> it's one of those things. Great movement from Hugo there. Scanlon on deck. You see, you see Hugo just move to the very back corner of the box here. That indicates he's taking it all the way. Steps forward now. Three balls, one strike. Three balls, one strike. On Hugo, Hugo wanting to get into play here. Loving the New Zealand home shirt, the uh, stingray on the front there. Yeah, hunter mentality. Walk there for Hugo and he'll head down to first base and it'll be interesting to see with his speed. Oh, here we go. Pitching Love change. It. Pitching change number 412 for this game. <laughs> It definitely feels like it. That's what is drawing this game on as we approach the three and a half hour mark. That brings Scanlon to the plate as well, hitting 250, uh, 250 in the tournament. Two at bats today, two runs uh, by two baseball, uh, two base by balls. So two walks uh, for for Scanlon today. And, yes, we uh, see uh, a strike out to his name. We see Coach Tidea Thompson just getting the. Uh, the New Zealand boys together there, Hugo, who's obviously on first base, and then Shane, who'll be at the plate, and the on-deck batter, Liam Hay. So, a little bit of advice for the three of them. Having seen the effects of uh, TP's advice, they might want to move that little huddle over this way and get a bit more of TP magic. TP Magic. Absolutely love it. So we do have this new picture uh, coming in. We will try to get a name for you as soon as our box scores are updated. Number 27 from Indonesia. I'll be uh, Channel his inner angels there in the red shirt with 27 on the back. Don't try and channel uh, angels pitching though. Yeah, it would be an interesting move there. And when I say interesting, I possibly mean terrible. <laughs> We've got Scanlon just in the uh, background there, just trying to time it up. So we're heading towards. 1.30 now, local time. Game that started at 10 a.m. This pitcher sitting at about 57. And Roy will be commentating the next game, of course, Korea vs Guam. I myself will be shooting off to the uh, Warriors game. And make sure you tune in and listen to disc jockey Roy. What do you got to uh, tell us about the Warriors so far this year, Samuel? Uh, a little bit unlucky. There is a strike. There is a throwdown. Another missed throwdown, Roy. And another steal. Going to lead the runner to third. Three times in a row now. Three times in this a row. This is unacceptable. Got to be telling you the player to, to stop taking the opportunity here, surely. This is going to hurt the catcher visibly frustrated. I think the catcher will be saying, I've got a decent arm, but it's not strong enough to go through both of you every time. Come on, fellas, help me out. Yeah, absolutely. Doing the plays right, just not finishing it. There's Scanlon with the foul off. Hits! Fifty-seven on that delivery. 
So Samuel obviously talking about the Warriors. He's talking about the local rugby league team here, playing the NRL, National Rugby League in Australia. Yeah. Up against the Knights today. Been a little bit unlucky with their games. Uh, they have oh, got big hit here. Big hit. Just Shane like Scanlon. Has. Left field. Oh, has no. lost it. Oh, Tag no. Up Hugo's in. Scanlon's running around for two here. He's pushed it. He's got it. He is happy with that double. Well done. Shane Scanlon finding form on that swing there. Absolutely Ah, uh, the pitcher can feel ripped off there. That was a simple fly ball to left field. That should have been an out. It would have still driven in a run. Shane doing a good job with that. Yep, would have been a sack fly. Uh, which I'm sure New Zealand would be happy with. But even happier to have a run in to bring it to 13-7. Uh, that is 13 70 and, cents, uh, Samuel. And to have a runner still in scoring position. As we see Liam pay up, he drives it out. Past the shortstop. Shortstop's angry with himself. That advances Shane to, to third. And Liam safe up first. That shortstop visibly angry with himself. And as you know, Roy, you, you can't allow your emotions to affect your game like that. Well, I think the shortstop just understood the batter in the box here, Liam Wheels Hay, was always going to probably beat that out, it was always going to be a tough play, he tried to rush it that led to the little error he wanted to show off his arm, never got the chance TJ Musa, a 440 average for this tournament and there goes Wheels, down watches, to second watches a strike runner advancing from 1 to 2 Liam Hay 56 mile an hour that pitch. And TJ will look to rip one here. TJ being on it today for at bats. Three hits. Interesting situation. Indonesia playing infield in, which means a ground ball to one of the infielders. They're going to be looking to go home. And this was the exact situation where New Zealand ran themselves into two outs in yesterday's game. TJ really looking it up, that ball inside, 56 miles, but TJ still wanting to defend his zone. Barely wants a piece of this. Bottom of the six, 13-7 New Zealand. Nice pitch. High, 57 miles, just top of the zone, or out of the zone, sorry. Brings up two balls, two strikes. TJ, being patient on it. That one inside, Scanlon, halfway down that third baseline. He is wanting to come home. Just sitting on that uh, drop ball if it is any, uh, yeah, Interesting here, that off-speed pitch. Under 50, is 47 mile an hour. 47 miles an hour. You throw a ball, uh, throw a ball that slow and you're glad that you got a tailwind because that's the only thing that got it there. TJ squaring up on that one, fouling it behind him. 57 miles. TJ really wanting a piece of this. So we're full count here, Samuel. TJ's got the, the possibility of bringing up a four-hit game. It's a, an amazing game. There he goes with a four-ball walk. Just to load the bases. This is really not what Indonesia wanted to find themselves in. Especially with Mazaya coming to the plate, batting a 375 for the tournament. Um, he's at three at bats and one hit today. He'll be looking to add to that as well in his fourth at bat. I'd like to see him look to just line a single here rather than trying to hit a home run. It's almost impossible with this one. Messiah uh, just slightly choking, choking short that bat actually. Yeah, I think that's him actually realising the situation. Into the wind, you're not hitting one out. So just choke up a little, just go with 
a singles approach which would probably drive in two runs. 58 miles on that last pitch. Great piece down to the third baseline. Third base bobbles it. He gets it out on three and oh. another out on one for a double play. Let's go. That is a spectacular double play. How Lee he Lee had... is looking at his coach to challenge it. No. no, they've decided not worth it. How do you have the time on the bobble to run to third base and then uncork a throw over to first? Fantastic play from Indonesia to retire the side on a 5-3 double play. Indonesia will be pumped from that, needing a big inning here as we end, as we go move into the top of the seventh, final inning of the game. Umpire is just deliberate, just talking, having a look at this game. They are challenging this. Uh, they are looking at this first base line. Note that out is going to stand. I don't think there's any challenge here, Samuel. I think it was out all day. No run. They are calling no run for that New Zealand team. So Scanlon did not get in time. Wow. Oh, three plates, sorry. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No time to play on that one. Doesn't matter. Yeah. It's very uh, interesting to even think that that's a challenge. Harvey, not wanting to go through his complete warm up here, has already called balls in. Doesn't care that the umpire is still talking to the coaches. He's saying, hey, I'm ready to go. Let's go. Absolutely. Hugo just saying, come on, boys, let's get this over and done with. I'm ready for lunch. Oh, I am ready for lunch. What is for lunch today? Well, I must say that the double cheeseburger from uh, the little canteen over there is pretty spectacular. Unfortunately, I think that um, we have the entire Hay family here today, so they might all be gone. So we do have Narendra coming to uh, the play, and he is not on my uh, lineup. It would be nice if we uh, so no stats for him. had the notorious barbecue here at the park, but maybe next year when we uh, can, you know, as we look to build on this tournament, Roy. Absolutely, and we will build on this. It's going to be bigger and better next year. We hope to see more countries. I'd love to see the likes of Qatar, China. Well, we know Qatar was uh, was keen. They just couldn't get the timing. Absolutely. Uh, to Inside pitch there from Hugo at 54 miles. Philippines will be good to see down here. A regular competitor in the Asia Pacific Little League. Hugo putting that one in the dirt. 53 miles. And if we go right back to uh, the first Little League competition I attended, we had Vietnam, we had Hong Kong. That one's a strike. Plenty of teams that could be here, Samuel, and we'd Two love balls. to see them down in our little neck of the woods next year. Two balls, one strike. That's right. You know, uh, down here at Flat Field, at uh, Lloyd Ellsmore Park, we do have two diamonds, two senior diamonds, and uh, we'd love to see them both in action with more teams down here. So if you are part of the Asia-Pacific Middle East qualifying region, looked like Hugo just reared back on that last one and just blew a fastball past him. I'm uh, sitting a little bit high at 52 miles. 52 miles from uh, Hugo right. Harvey. There. Throwing the high cheese, but the better doesn't take it. Oh, and there we oh, go. There we go with the strike. Woo! It's going to be three strikes and out. Strike out swinging. Reach back a little bit extra on that one. 54. Looking very confident on the mound. He knows he, he, knows he has like this game. Be pitching him out today, Roy. Oh, there we go. Number nine to go with a little bit of a fight off. 
Well, Hugo's normally the starting second baseman. He's definitely uh, not one of the aces of this team, despite the performance he's putting on today. Absolute clinic. This is, of course, Indonesia's top of the uh, order, so they'll be hoping for some big things. That's a big hit. I believe that might be going foul. It looks like it might be in play. Right on the fence line. No play there to make that play. Um, and, of course, to co uh, Batting 286 uh, so far in this tournament. He's had three at bats today with one run, one base by all, but striked out twice. We'll be hoping to uh, get on base here, either by base by ball or with a hit. That one in the dirt by Hugo. Hugo's looking impatient up there. He looks like he's ready for lunch, Samuel. It's been a long game. Oh, and a big hit by number nine. That is going out to centre field. Centre field has lost it. He's dropped it. He laid it out on the line. That wind again being deceptive. Probably just holding up a little bit short. Thought he was going to travel a little bit more. And uh, just a slight misread there from... Uh, TJ Amosa out in centre field there, Roy. Absolutely. You could see TJ, the way he was tracking that at first off the bat, he thought he had it under control and the wind just knocked it down. Lunging effort at the end, but no chance. Now, Kenan Trasundi in second here. Batting second. Runner goes on that and steals without a throw. Shane decided to hold on to the ball. Batting a 2 2 2 through the tournament. Three at bats today. He has a run, a hit, and two RBIs credit to him with the base by ball. It's a ball from uh, Hugo. Hugo, not sure about the call. Just uh, confirming our score there, Samuel. 13-7 to yeah. New Zealand. Excellent. There's been a lot of action in this game. That is a prop up. That's going to go Shane looking, but it has fell out of the park. Trisandi really wanting a piece of this, really wanting to put this into play. Try and get uh, Rosia around the diamond. Needing to score here, of course. This is the final inning of the game, Roy. Yeah, all the pressure on Indonesia. And no matter what happens here, both of these teams will be watching with great interest what happens in the next game between Guam Run and goes. Korea. That's a big foul outright. Massive hit. That's going to send the runner back to second. He had a great jump on that though. Jumping even before the pitcher completed his motion. So in theory we're just 20 minutes away from the next game starting. It's going to be no rest for the wicket. No, no rest for the wicket today, Samuel. Runner goes again. Runner goes again. Three down to third. Third's lost it up. Oh, and he's going for it. Oh, and there's a misplay from Tangaroa King there. Slide in. Indonesia will be happy about that. Bringing the score to 13-8. Just closing that gap a little bit more. Great hustle baseball from Indonesia there. Just trying to close that gap there, Roy. We've seen it all day, Samuel. You put pressure on these teams and mistakes have been happening. We saw New Zealand players stealing second, ending up on third, and now we see an Indonesian player stealing third, ending up all the way home. There we go, there's a hit. That's through first and second there for a, just a safe little booper out into right field there. Messiah cleaning up, throwing it in to uh, Ben Bongiovanni in second there to hold the runner. Great, great piece of baseball there, great play, and just managed to split the fielders there in the infield there. Well, there's certainly something about this New Zealand team once it goes past three and a half hours. It's, it's clearly it's clearly their time limit on the game. All right, we do have um, Athia at the plate. One runner goes for the tournament. There's the runner, Scanlon throwing down past Ben again. Oh no, this is not what we want. This is what we saw in the Indonesian inning, and it's now happening to New Zealand. 
I'm not sure what happened there. I think Shane was struggling to get a grip on the ball. He's, he double pumped it. That does send Trisundi right around to third. Putting, putting the fielder in, uh, sorry, putting the runner in scoring position again. What we're seeing here. Team just saying, hey, we're good. Just relax. We're good. We're here. We can hear Indonesia just starting to pump up. They know they're not out of this, Roy. Captain of the New Zealand team there, Liam Hay, just calming his pitcher down, saying, you're doing a good job. Keep throwing strikes. And that's Mitchell what Hugo does. Mitchell has to be able to rely on those seven players behind him. Great strike there. One and one. A minute 58 miles. Oh, good piece. That's going to be going foul. Out. We've seen that uh, that bat a lot today. Out over the fence. Foul. Being helped by the southerly that we've talked about. Indonesian players really looking for jackets and feeling the cold. That's up high from Hugo. Going to be a 2-2. 2-2 count, on the batter. Oh, good piece! Threading the needle between short and second, out to the centre field. That brings another run home for Sunny, scoring, bringing the score to 13-9. Closing up, the closing that gap. This is going to be giving confidence to Indonesia here. Runner on first. That was perfectly timed. You couldn't get any squarer than that, Roy. Absolutely. New Zealand coaches showing complete confidence in Hugo, though. I don't see any hint of them making a replacement. They're backing Hugo to finish this game. All right, we have number eight. Sumpaton coming in. 125 for the tournament. Four at bats today. One hit, one run. Two RBIs, one strikeout. He knows what to do at the plate here, Roy. So, Samuel, it's been a pleasure having you in the commentary box, and I guess everyone's going to be asking, will we see you back for the semi finals or the final? Well, Roy, I, I'm going to message my manager, but I will be working. Um, you mean this isn't your main job? I think, no. But I do finish uh, I do finish at 2pm, so if I can finish at 1, you know, just a little bit earlier, um, and get out here for, getting out here for the 2 o'clock games, then <laughs> I promise you now, Roy, I will be here. It has been great fun. Thank you to Roy. Runner guys. Fouled off. Fouled off. Sends the runner back. It has been a great privilege to be out here and uh, couldn't, couldn't, couldn't have a better co-host with Roy. Um, so thank you for uh, inviting me in here, Roy. And well, everybody knows there's not much better in the play-by-play -play field than Samuel Lever, so... <laughs> it's been great putting it to use. Go oh, hit by pitch. Hit by pitch there to advance the runner there. Bit of chitter chatter there by uh, the runner and short stop there. Doesn't look like a friendly chitter chatter either. <laughs> Indonesia feeling it. Dharma. Dharma. J uh, Jaradama coming in now. Still batting zero for the tournament, but uh, plenty of stats on hand, including RBI. Coming in from a base by ball, which is still a quality at bat, isn't it? I think we we uh, sell short our, our walks, uh, Roy, but still a quality at bat if you can draw a walk, right? Well, Samuel, I'm an Oakland A's supporter, and uh, Moneyball really really brought the attention to on base percentage and that's what you're talking about get on base absolutely massive hit from number 10 there to, uh, it is under there though great glove having to go back yep they tagged up decided not to run there 
Dharma, massive piece of uh, massive contact. They're finally getting their second out of the inning. New Zealand will be feeling good about that. Just one out away from winning their first game of the tournament, Roy. TJ, uh, who was looking incredibly safe earlier, just a little bit nervy under that one. Yeah, that wind pushing it. And of course, he just had that drop ball not that long ago. But the out was taken, and as you point out, we're just one out away one from out. this game coming to a close. Harvey stepping off after that runner on second is taking a monstrous leap. Runners go. Aggressive. So he it. is. No. Oh, he, can't, he got there. Oh, he's caught a safe. Yeah, he got around the tag, Samuel. I think. Uh, okay, I've got Paul in my way, so I missed it, but Roy has, Roy has pulled it safe. Absolutely. And Coach Tyre has called time once uh, Oh, you can challenge that all you want. I think if we go to the replay. To chat with Keith. No, actually, we don't have a replay. But if we had a replay, it would show that he came popping up around the tag and got himself to the base. Yep, Keith saying he, he clearly got away. I had the view. I'm backing you on that one, Keith. Tyre asking if he can challenge it with Paul. And Keith saying, no, it's my call. I saw it. I'm standing right here. That puts runners. Second and third. Two in scoring position now. Indonesia still trying to fire up here. Plenty of jackets on the Indonesian team now. We go just on the outside there. Well, it's certainly become more interesting than in this New Zealand team would have liked. And it, what it's showing, Samuel, is the fight that this Indonesian team has. They won't lie down. They're going to fight to the very last out of this match. Yep, Indonesia definitely showing that they want this just as much as anyone. Just as much as the Kiwis. They want that win under their belt. Hubert really struggling with his command at the moment, just hitting that outside low corner for another ball. Two balls. Come on, come on. He's just up there. Base is loaded. The bases. <laughs> this is the tying, tying run coming to the plate. What do you do here, Roy? You're talking to... You, you, you can't come out and talk to your pitcher, so what do you do? Are you thinking who's next? Are you thinking we've got to stick with him? Well, we've talked about it a lot, Samuel. Bringing a new pitcher on with bases loaded is a horrible situation. And I think you just have to back Hugo to get us out of this. Absolutely, and so we've got... And he's hit him. Hit him. Baseball run. He's, Hugo's actually looking at the dugout now, saying, Coach, what are you doing? He's looking at a bit of support from his coach. Coach is saying, you've got it. A lot of action here, Samuel. I, I, I think I'm up with it. I think we're now 13-10. 13-10, that is correct, Roy. The go-ahead run at the plate. Still two down. It's only one... Run away, bases loaded, uh, sorry, one out away from ending this game. Bases loaded situation. <laughs> Salam at the tongue if you are watching us from Indonesia. Your boys representing you really well today. Thank you for joining us. Number 77, really wanting to... Oh no, 77's on uh, first. Who is this new bit? Oh, that's a nice pitch. That is a pitch and a half. That is a strike. That's what we need from Hugo right now. 59 miles straight down the middle. That is really saying, hey, three strikes. Three strikes. That's what we need. No. Chisnandi. Uh, saying that is not my call. There has been nothing easy for this New Zealand team all tournament. Two it, balls, one strike. It looked like today was the day that they were going to give themselves a slightly easier game and here we are. 